Take a look. It's February 12, 2024. I am Agile Pearl. It's time to get in the weeds. Thank you, Dwayne, for the rub. Of course, wanting to show the world that, yes, we are live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern until noon here on Fightful Overbook. Jeremy Lambert is here. It's a wonderful Monday because I just I just got it for you. I saw the look on your face in the back. That, that was not... Um, that That was not what happened... The Rock was booed because he turned heel, which in the world of WWE means he is playing a bad guy. It has nothing to do with in the weeds. It, the fact that he has to respond to this toxic uh, comment, it, we should all do better, Joel. Can I touch on this for two seconds? Sure, it's our show. We can do whatever we want, allegedly. I, I don't I don't like, you know, giving breath to some of that shit. I saw the I saw the post and I saw the reply from uh from The Rock. And I thought I thought Dwayne was well within his right to, to go after this dude. He should have gone harder. Guy. And some people were like, Oh, you don't understand. This guy, Nick, is on the ground and he gets it and he's he's just doing his <laughs> I'm saying like I, I see where you report, I see what you report. I'm sorry, man. Like without getting Without getting weird, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, maybe I should keep it to myself. There are some financial incentives for some people in life to do certain things and say certain things. Maybe maybe this person has some financial gains by doing what he does. So that's how I felt, and I'm glad that The Rock went after him because, you know, The Rock has been doing stuff for Hawaii. He doesn't need to commit literally all of his money and all of his time to one project. And he has people working on it. I'm not going to say The Rock is perfect. I think he's far from it. That was just ridiculous. I'm glad The Rock went after him. Yeah, he, he, he was too nice, if anything else. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, should have should have put boots to asses more to this man. Um, he's a heel. Why didn't he? You're right. Yeah. What are we missing? What are we doing? That was the part that I was like, you don't need to explain like WWE terms like that's where it was like too 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 nice about it like just go off on this dude fuck him it's a very rare opportunity for us to do in the tweets because <laughs> we never we don't do the, the whole like oh someone's subtweeting about this guy there's this, this twitter beef we don't we don't we don't really well, do there's that. twitter beef if it's relevant to wrestling i don't care about your stupid media wars i don't pay attention to any of that well, that's, that's what i'm getting at is that when we talk about it we don't like we don't do it all the time, but either way, it was, uh, yeah, it was what it was with The Rock. The Rock deserved uh, to go out, to go off on this guy. And I agree with you. He should have gone harder, especially as a heel. Should have been like, now that I'm a heel and now that you know, I can say this, shut your mouth, yada, yada, call him crybaby bitch, things like that. Cody's crybabies. Yeah, he should have, should have gone all in on on the, that's sorry wrong company um, right y'all can go all in on us by leaving a thumbs up on the video and subscribing us here on fightful over books of course you can donate a super chat any amount get your question statement right on the air we'll get to our first one in a second but jeremy lambert you had a point you were trying to make to the sign before i cut you off right there i always do that with the with the fireworks wrestlemania season you always got a point to just whatever is behind you when the fireworks go off there's no fireworks going off Joel. I don't have the fireworks. I don't have my, my MacBooks over there, but I got, I got, I got La Parka mask. Woo. I'm pointing to La Parka. Love you. Love you every day. Uh, Cody Wilson. Ailey was rocking a La Parka purse on Friday. Good for her. She should. That's a killer purse. Bailey's probably sad right now. Yeah, they all are. They were all Niners fans at that uh, yeah. particular <laughs> event. Uh, okay. Hold on. Before we get to the super chat uh, that we have, we have to talk about, you know, Taylor finishing the story. Yes, she, uh, she came in. She she drove her 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 group to the to the win. The Super Bowl is now a, right. a, you know the, the the Chiefs won. I I watched the the end of the fourth quarter and I watched overtime when they said it's a brand new game. I was like, I'm gonna shut this off. And then they're like, No, but the first team to score wins. I'm like, All right, I can sit through this. But it wasn't the first team that scored. 
to score wins. Otherwise, the the Niners would have won. Maybe that's what the Niners thought the rules were, because apparently nobody gave them a heads up of what the actual rules were until the game. Well, you got to you got to watch out. Apparently, these are these, these were new rules for this year, or for the first time they've done this in in overtime since like twenty twenty one. I don't know. I just I watched it and I I heard the referee be like, "It's a new game," and I'm like, "Oh, damn it!" These are just the first time they've been implemented because it's the first time it's happened. Oh, so, you know, that's not that that's not the that's the Niners' fault. They should have you know been coached on that or studied a playbook or a rule book or something in case this happened. The Chiefs were like, yeah, we were talking about this all week in case it happened. Like we, you know, we were we were we were prepared. The Niners clearly weren't. That's why they lost. Should have had the new day come out and explain the new rules. New day, new rules, new game. Yes it is. Louie in the chat pointing that out. Could have done that. That would have been fun. All right? And then maybe the Niners would have gotten it. All the wrestlers should have come out on the Exactly. No pop. Exactly. That's that's how it was in the stadium when they explained the rules. Fine, it's Louie who did that. It wasn't my pop, it's his. The Chiefs should be thankful for the great Taylor Swift who showed up two hours before kickoff because she was in Japan doing a, a concert. Imagine she did all this concert, Joel, and then flew, time traveled, and then won a Super Bowl. It's honestly like the greatest 24 hour period in history. Paul McCartney never did that. What he ever win? Sinatra I mean, never pulled it off. Who else is like a famous singer that I don't really care about? I don't know. Did Luda? No, I like Luda. Well, no, just, I don't, like the famous singers that you like. I don't I don't care much for what are we doing here? I don't. Well, I mean, I, Paul, you, like Paul, but you know. Yeah, a Beatles fan. I'm a Beatles fan of Billy Joel, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Billy Joel, yeah, he never did that. Never did a concert. Flew across country. Won a Super Bowl. He's None more of, of a baseball people. guy. If he did it with the World Series, it'd be a bigger deal. Like if the Mets, well, like, didn't do that either. A, well, yeah, but I'm saying if the Mets like went to the World Series and he was like GM for a game, then yeah, he would probably get. You think Taylor's gonna get a ring? I hope she gets the ring. I like I hope she, she gets the Super Bowl ring. I told you she's getting, she's getting two. She's getting two. Well, she didn't get one. Oh yeah, that was the other thing too. So last night she wins the Super Bowl. She gets engaged, married, and pops out a kid literally in the same like five minute span on the field. If you're listening to certain media, that that's would what be happened. Difficult. Uh, well, it's it's Taylor Swift. She can do anything. What do you think of the halftime show, Joel? Aren't you an Usher fan? I didn't watch it. Wow. I was I was honest to God. I was sick, so I was two screening. And while I was doing some work because I actually had work to do last night, uh, I was I was editing some video and I was getting our thumbnail ready, and then and also the copy for for everything. And then on the other screen, I turned on uh, this 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 Beatles cover group called the Analogs. They had put up a concert from 2023 that I hadn't seen, so I watched that. And then someone put up an old Billy Joel concert, and I watched that, and I was just like, oh okay. And people were like talking about the game and then talking about the halftime show, and I'm just like. All right, sounds like it was fun. I'm not going to go back and watch any of it. It existed. Same thing with the commercials. It's like, oh, we're talking about Timu. I'm like, oh, you're talking about the the company that employs allegedly uh, slave labor and and also you know gets a huge light shine on them because tech YouTubers spend all of their money doing videos and different content. I'll be like, oh, it's Timu, and let's see if they're a ripoff. As I spend five thousand dollars on product, and it's just like, why why are we why are we doing this? I don't. I just don't give a shit. So no, I didn't watch the halftime show. I don't know what Timu is. The only Timu I recognize is Solani. It's Timu Solani, exactly. The yeah. only one you need is number eight. Not spending eight thousand dollars on that garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I SP3 is here. We're gonna talk about he Solani lives here. tomorrow. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this tomorrow on in the week or not in the weeds. This is in the weeds. We're gonna talk about tomorrow on FMC, I believe. I did not care for the Super Bowl halftime show. My God, hot take. I'm a fan of Usher. I like Usher. That confession CD. I'll bump some songs to that to this day. I like that he played Burn because I was uh, not totally sure he was going to play Burn because it's a very slow song and everything. But but that's one of my favorite Usher songs. It was too much. It it was too... Maybe maybe that this is what I was... uh, people should have myself 
should have expected the performance and the dancing and everything. Like there wasn't a whole lot of singing going on. Man just did choreography. If I wanted to watch that, I'd throw on a Young Bucks match. All right, I was there for a singing. I was not there for for a, okay. Bring 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 on bring bring him on. Let's get his thoughts on this stuff. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta bring up the video. I ain't expecting this early. Let's go. Z News is here. And you guys summoned me. You guys summoned me. You brought up the Mets. You brought up Billy Joel. And here I am. I was wondering. That is how I know if you're watching. <laughs> it's like the big signal goes up. It's just there. a big Mets signal. Here. Can anybody hear me? I hear you. All right. Beyonce broke my Verizon 5G internet. Oh, that's Darren, awesome. Darren, what did you think of the Super Bowl halftime show? Um, I did not watch it. Oh, my gosh. Did nobody watch anything around here? No. no. We, were watching, no. we were watching Beatles and Billy Joel concerts, man. No, we, we had Sunday. You know, I'm not a big football guy. I mean, I had it on. It was on. I had it on. I don't I don't care about football that much. Andrew was a not my thing. He was a trip. Now the World Series. I'll be watching. I was actually uh, on Saturday, which I, I did the I did the touching of the the holy water to scare my t- kids, and I kept screaming, "Ah, mm-hmm. oh, but it's cold, like Hogan. Yeah. It's not hot. It's not hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll play it. Uh, you know, we didn't get you on last week to do a to do a victory lap. Oh, I, I didn't call in yesterday to do my victory lap. No, I didn't. I I, oh, I couldn't Friday. call in on Friday. Yeah, we, yeah. Had a, we had a busy week. Yeah, I had a busy. It was a busy week. Uh, now you know a lot of the detractors. A lot of those. Uh, she's not. She would never dare go to AEW. Now are writing. Man, she wasn't good anyway. That's how it works. Yep. You know. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that building is going to be super empty on the 13th of March. That's well, I think right now, what do they have? Like 5,600 tickets? Yeah, they've done pretty well for a start. Listen, the, the show is a month away. Like, you're going to you're gonna do pretty well. And as they announce more matches, you're going to go even harder and get some... You're going to get a lot of tickets sold. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And when we talk about Okada, like, again, mixed Okada. feelings. Okada is going to be there, too. Well, regardless, I'm saying, like, with, with them bringing in Okada, they're, like, again, it's mixed views as to whether or not it's a it, it's cool for him or where he should go, whatever. That's up to him. But like again, they're loading up their roster with stars, and why not? Do what you yeah. do. Listen, the whole the whole honestly, it's really going to come down to how strongly they're booking these people and yep. if they make a difference. You know, we saw how much of an impact Punk had obviously on their business, but the business was hot when that happened. He went into a really hot product post pandemic. Same thing with Danielson, same thing with Adam Cole. Uh, you know, th- those three acquisitions were humongous for that company, but it came at a really hot period. Now it's a cold period for them. And, you know, Will Ospreay, Mercedes, and Okada, and any company would be a tremendous difference maker. But Edge didn't do much, you know, unfortunately. So I- I'm curious how they're going to position this and how this is going to go over. I wonder if they thought that Adam Copeland would do much. I think they maybe saw him as like as a shot in the arm, but I think they saw him more as like someone that they can rely on backstage a little bit more. Someone who can maybe give some more coaching or some more like I've been in sports entertainment, say like you know, for better or worse, for twenty five plus years. I have some knowledge to impart and I also get to work with my best friend. That's kind of how I saw the the Adam Copeland signing. It was never like we're gonna break all the molds with him. It was that you know, here's a guy you know. Here's a guy. They that, said that it was going to be a new era for yeah, that AEW. Was, oh, that was, I think that was them pivoting over something that they thought they had. No, I oh, think. They, hold on, hold on. What, what, which, what are you talking about? You're talking about the wrestle, the yeah, wrestle, wrestle dream, dream promo. Yeah. What do you think they had? That's the thing. I don't know, but it felt like they just leaned into it and said, "Oh yeah, this is the era. This is it's the rated R era," and that was it. And they just kind of left it by the wayside. Well. I, it's very possible they thought they had something. There you go. That, that makes cool. sense. Was it a stadium yeah. show, Andrew Zarian? Was that what they had? Oh, God. I, I don't even want to talk, talk about it because um, it was a super chat, and I'm not ready to talk about it, and I opened my big fat mouth, 
And then I I did the all classic pivot. We're like, well, you know, they do run a stadium show at least once a year in North America. Uh, you know, I, I have a problem. I told you I'm a Yenta. I can't, I can't, I can't stop. <laughs> can't stop. Won't stop. Uh, it's okay. We all can't wait for all elite WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, dude, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. Uh, which I, I would love to see that. Of course. I just wanted to troll you real nice. <laughs> they got to book something at the, the Jaguar stadium, right? Then that make at least the most sense on that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they, what is the maximum attendance you think they could do in North America for a stadium? Yeah. If they just... announced, if they said tomorrow, you know, uh, we're announcing a stadium show, right? And mm-hmm. everybody's healthy. They have Kenny there. Everybody's healthy. They got a full roster. What do you think they could do realistically in North America? I could see 25, 28, max 30. But again, this is one of the, one of the benefits of doing all in, in the UK is that it's the only show that they currently run in the UK. It's easy to get to. Not that places in the States aren't easy to get to with flying, but like, it's a different experience doing a UK show where you're never in the UK versus being in the States where you are predominantly showing your airing your show uh, and running it. I, I don't know. I, I 25, maybe 30. Yeah. I think it depends on the card. A big portion of that. I mean, you're telling me everybody's healthy. Like you got to put together a strong card. I mean, the revolutions being sold on Sting's retirement. If you didn't have Sting's retirement for that, how and this is just a normal match, let's say, like is it doing this hot of business? And they'll probably get ten for the dynamite, but like general dynamite collision, dynamite. I'm talking big business. Um, like they'll they'll get. I don't know if they'll get ten. That might be a little ambitious. Um, but they'll do their strongest dynamite they've done in months with this show. Yeah, I could see between 30 and 40 for a stadium, depending on the card and what you're actually gonna gonna put on it. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a that's a reality. You know, they could do that. But and where? You know, they've got to run. Yeah, they did they did twenty Chicago. at Arthur Ashe that first Chicago. year. They did twenty on a Wednesday. Yeah, and like Jeremy's saying Chicago, and I, I do tend to agree. I don't know where in Chicago, if you're running a quote unquote stadium that you can run. Bay- Soldier Field, I assume. It, that's a massive venue. You're yeah. gonna have to really play it up to get, you know, to get that going. I don't know. I, it's the only I mean, I, I assume there's other stadiums in Chicago, but Oh, there's Wrigley, Wrigley Field if you want to yeah. yeah. But again, some of these fields don't like you having anything near the uh the actual diamond. Like they want you to tarp off the diamond, cover it up, and because it's sacred, you can't, you know, you can't mess it up. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they're capable. I know that this is a big transformative year for them between TV rights and uh, you know, just stacking up this roster a little bit more and possibilities of you know, Camille coming in to add more to that women's roster. I I, I you know, the, you could obviously tell the direction they're heading in. Now, you got guys like Osprey and Okada. What does that do to your main top-tier talent portion, right? Right now, the story is MJF. It's Swerve. It's, uh, you know, MJF's hurt, but he's still in that mix, right? MJF, Swerve, Joe, Hangman. Now you're adding Okada. Now you're adding Will Osprey. What happens to the structure of that company? You know, do you change your plans? If your plan was for, let's say, Hangman to, to have a title run or MJF to come back and have a long title run, now with the Okada mix, do you, do you change that? If you have an opportunity to kind of bump yourself a little bit more. I'd keep the belt on Joe for about the next five years and then just reap the benefits of that, honestly. It's true. Just for his Twitter banter alone. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Cares about these other dudes. <laughs> just keep the belt on Joe. That's always proven to be a successful formula. Now, it, it is true, though, with Osprey coming in, with Okada coming in, even Mer- if Mercedes and Camille, people coming in who you know are going to be slotted high on the card, it bumps other people down. And it not only bumps other people down in that division, it bumps other people down in other divisions because it's like oh now i gotta make more time for a singles osprey match a singles okada match a singles mercedes match that's gonna take this match 
could be a women's yeah. match, could be a men's match off the card. Like it's just the reality of, of how things are booked. It happened when Danielson and Cole and, and Punk all came in. Things had to things people got bumped down, things got taken off the card. There was less focus on other certain aspects of, of the show because of that. People were excited because those guys were then on the card and excited to see them wrestle. Same thing's gonna happen here. People are gonna be very excited for it. But then I don't know if it's a honeymoon period. At some point, things will start to wear off and people will be like, oh, well, I want to see more of this guy. I want to see more of that guy. Already lacking in some of that areas with the tag division was a mess until yeah. the Bucks have come in and saved it. The trios division's an absolute non just talking point at this point. Please so, do something happens. with Jay White. For the love of Christ, do something with well, Jay White. That, that's who I was going to touch on. I mean, Jay White is Jay White came in, former IWGP world champion. Like Will Ospreay, like Okada, he came in, didn't come near the top. He came somewhere in the middle, and he's still there. He's still somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it, it's it's been a common kind of issue with AEW and the booking is that we, we talked about this too with the women's division, right? With with Deanna, we hope that it breaks the mold. They bring someone in, they give them a title shot, then they shuffle down the deck, and you either get lost or you recreate yourself and you become a new character, all of Tony Storm. Uh, I, and I do agree with Jeff Valley Driver in the chat saying, you know, Jay White's not Okada and Osprey, respectfully. And like, there's a point to that. Okada comes with a different pedigree. Osprey comes with a different pedigree. Jay White is, is I, we talk about potential. You want to talk about potential for a big, big star, big, big money draw. That's Jay White. And he proves it time and again that he's very entertaining and has very good matches. That's kind of where the argument is, is like, can you take a guy like Jay White and heat him up again to a point where he is as believable as an Okada coming in or as uh, a Will Ospreay who's coming in as well? Yeah. I mean, Jay White, just that whole MJF feud did him in completely. And then they, they haven't been yeah. able to recover from it. You know, they the Continental Classic built him up a little bit, but then he's just doing trio stuff. And that's a... It's a DOA division right now. It's just Listen, part, it's a part of what division. they've done also is, you know, a lot of top guys came into that company. We were talking, we spoke about an observer yesterday and established top guys. And they came in, they're like, Hey, listen, but I just want to put over the young guys. Right. Cody was one of those guys. Uh, Omega was one of those guys. You know, they didn't want to be labeled as, you know, their EVPs and they're putting themselves at the top of the positioning, but that was a detriment to that company to an extent. You know, Kenny had a run as world champion, but he was really banged up throughout that entire thing. We never got to see with Cody. We don't know what that story would have been if he had immediately gotten that world title, maybe defeating Jericho or whatever they could have done to kind of build him as that Captain America guy like WWE did. I, I Probably Copeland's the same exact thing too, but you have to realize some of these guys like Danielson, they have tremendous name recognition and having them as your champion, having them at the top tier really goes a long way. And, you know, I think they'll do it with Danielson now with the Triple Crown or Continental, whatever they're calling it now. Uh, but I, 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 I think some of those established, what? You don't think he'll win it? I don't know. They, because nah. Danielson, bless him, he he just doesn't want to be that guy by all accounts. But you know what? It's not about it's not about, about what he wants. But that's the thing. But the, the, they continue to let it be about what he wants because he gets to have all these dream matches. And, like, again, he's got his quote-unquote final – full-time year and like this isn't a dig at da danielson you could just go back and watch the matches and watch the booking like it's very much geared towards how danielson would want to do business and i'm and, and this isn't me being like tony sean tony khan sucks at this it's not it's just that he has the opportunity to be like hey danielson you could be running this game for us and it's not happening and danielson I, is a big name that has that potential and has that ability i think like they just announced uh this match for Windy City Riot, Eddie Kingston, and Gabe Kidd, instead of a rematch for the Continental Crown, which it probably should have been because the first match ended in no contest, they're doing a, a Riot Rules multi-man match on this. This is April. This is after Revolution. I'm not saying this is a tip that Eddie Kingston is losing at Revolution. I am curious as to why they just did not do a singles rematch with a no DQ stipulation between Eddie and Gabe. And they decided to go with a multi-man match in this spot instead. Fair. 
Yeah. We're going to find out uh, after March 3rd. It could very well be. And again, New Japan's not very good at uh, letting you, le- letting the other company let us know. It's always, we're going to book this match before something else happens. <laughs> before Or right before another big match happens. And it gets like weird. Brian, like Brian Danielson wants to lose the matches. Let him lose the matches. Whatever he wants to do. Like but it can... shouldn't be that way because you invested this much time and money into this yeah. guy. Why wouldn't That's what you I'm saying. Him running the show? Why wouldn't you want him running, running the product and making it hot, doing what he does and being a centerpiece figure of your show? Why do you, you want you can him still... to be a mid card guy who goes out with his buddies and you know whether he's a heel or face? It depends on who he faces. Why are you? Why is that okay? Why can't he be the guy running this entire company on screen? I'm talking about. Why do you have to book him in title matches? Then just book other stuff around him instead of putting him in title match and then having him lose all of that stuff. Book him in big matches. If he he doesn't need to win the world title, look, I thought he should have. I thought he should have beat MJF last year. I was proven correct, honestly. I think he should beat. I think I do think he should beat. Eddie Kingston. But if he doesn't want to win a world title, I don't know, maybe stop booking him in these world title matches then. Book him elsewhere and do these cool dream matches. I mean, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> it really yeah. comes down to yeah, how you book him and what and, and and putting your foot down if you're if you are Tony Khan just being like, "No, you are you're going to be my guy. I have this much faith in you. I've given you this much. Let's go." Um, Zarian, where did you get that Saturday night's main event sign? Isn't that great? Hold on, I got this one. It's sexy. I, I this saw one. that. I saw I the WWE. And then I also have a hardcore TV one, ECW hardcore oh, TV one. Give me on. that. Do you want to see it? I do. Can I see? Hold this? on. Let me get it. Let me get it. You, 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 you've made it official. So now I have to see it. This. Oh this God. Is off. This oh God! I almost fell. That oh, that would have been okay. catastrophic. We would have just kicked you off the stream. It's okay. If I could get this, he's gonna find it. He's gonna get it. Oh, oh, oh hardcore that's wrestling. That's what it is. Yeah, I got to put this up. Can you just send it to me instead? Dude, these things are crazy expensive. I got it from Stash Page. Just going to look up. Go, everybody. Much- yeah, <laughs> there's the plug. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, but they're sold out. They sell out immediately. Of course they do. It's like the shadow boxes with WCW logo. <laughs> yeah. Those are yeah. so good. Uh, you got that light going by behind you. Is that your, your angelic light? That that's my hair light, yeah. Well, your halo, my halo, <laughs> oh, God. my hair light. Are you into feet, Andrew Zarian? I'm not. No, no. Why? Well, that this is what Jesus is—a big feet guy. This is what he we is. all learned last night. Oh yeah, we did learn that that he's a he he's a big foot guy. Foot washings, right? Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. The first yeah. still of that, by the way, I thought was Cody Rhodes. <laughs> I'm gonna pull this up. I understand? I get it. I really do. Cody I'm really gonna pull this up, and I was like, "Oh look, Cody's in a Super Bowl commercial." What do I Google for this? Jesus feet? Yeah, Jesus feet commercial. Yeah, everybody's we... all in on those. Yeah. Oh, it's, there you go. Someone mentioned the price for the ECW sign. I don't think I'm gonna be affording that, especially because that's USD. Yeah, 155 for that ECW sign. You know what else they just released? They released Von Eric jackets, which are really cool. And uh, I think Ribera jackets they just dropped yesterday. Oh, no one needs a Ribera jacket. Yes. Everyone, I ordered it. one. I ordered one. Oh, they bury Ribera. What are you doing? I wanted to get Scott Fishman on this show so he could bury Ribera because if anyone knows Scott Fishman, he buries nothing. There's one thing he buries, and I forget what it is, and it's consistent. But other than that, he puts over everything. It was he buried uh, Vic. Not Vic, the guy, Kevin Patrick. Kevin Patrick, KP. Yeah, Kevin Patrick, yeah. He was the only person who's not for him, but everyone right. else in the world, he loves it. Okay, look at this. Tell me, someone put an American Nightmare logo on this dude's neck. I might actually be able to do it. Tell me this ain't Cody washing feet. Oh my God, it is. <laughs> it is Cody. Yeah. Someone put the tattoo on his neck, please. Please. Hold on, I can do put it. Put the tattoo on his neck and Photoshop either Dustin or Dusty <laughs> as the guy that's being foot washed. I might go on that far, but <laughs> is now a good time to remind everyone that Connor Casey joins the show and like now? <laughs> oh, I gotta go. All right, I'm leaving. No, then. no he's not there yet. You can stick okay. around. You want to me off when he's here? <laughs> oh no, no, you'll just do the interview with us. That's how it works. I think I'm still stoned from last night. How yeah. much gummy was it? it I, I took n- like 25 milligrams. That's it. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted today. 
<laughs> again, the first time you and I hung out live was at SummerSlam in 21. And oh, yeah. Them gummies. <laughs> I get it. Dude, we were just, oh, my God. I probably took like 50 milligrams of gummies that day. Is and this- I was hanging out with Van Damme earlier in the, uh, the, the day before, right? No, it was the same day. Same day. I was supposed to be there, but I fell asleep. Yeah. I was exhausted. Wow. Well, I was exhausted. This is how it goes. Anyway, and now I do have to kick you off because our actual guest is here. All right, I'm leaving. Love all, all right. of you. Goodbye. Love you too. Bye, Andrew Zarian. All right, our actual guest is here. The one that we actually like. I mean, I like Andrew Zarian. Who am I kidding? I like Zarian. What are you yeah, talking about? Why are we all being right. mean to Andrew Zarian here? It's easy to do, but I like him. Anyway, our guest right now from CBS Sports Trending Desk, host of Comic Book Nation. We're going to talk about FXC and Crush Live this Friday in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Connor Casey joins us now. Good morning. What's up, guys? How are you doing? Connor, how are you this morning? I'm doing just dandy. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, Patrick Mahomes won his third Super Bowl last night, so I am... uh, I'm enjoying life right now. And also, I've got a kitty oh, cat who demands oh. attention and to be involved in the conversation. So oh. I'm trying to keep him behaving. Now, Connor, whenever we do these interviews, the uh, the person that is being represented in the match that they're pre- that they're promoting always wins. Can you guarantee that your associate, Brock O'Grady, is going to win this Friday against Colby Carter? Joel, I'm so glad you did the research. The only problem is that it's not on Friday. It is on Sunday. So Wow, look at Joel. If the match were on Friday, I couldn't make that guarantee because there's no match. But on Sunday, I can make that guarantee because Brock O'Grady is the future of this industry. Colby Carter, he's not ready for it. That's his problem. My mistake. What's on Friday then? I don't know. Oh, must not be important. Smackdown? It's every week. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they got some actor coming in for the show. I don't know. Nah, never um, heard of it. Before we got into the, the wrestling, I did want to talk about the Super Bowl because I know yeah. you are a Chiefs fan. Uh, and this guy over here allegedly listens to music but had no idea who Usher was. What did you think of the halftime Super Bowl? The, the halftime show at the Super Bowl? Connor Casey. Um, I thought I thought it was okay. Um, you know, Jeremy, I know I heard you mention off air, like, you know, Confessions was a big album for you growing up. Yeah, you know, that same for me. Yeah, was a was a huge single there for a time. For me, the shit it didn't pick up until Lil John came out, and then it was fun. And up until that point, I could have t- taken or leaving it. Yeah, I too much the, the dancing, the choreography, and like not enough. It wasn't singing, it was a backup track. The yeah. entire time it's like what are, what are we doing ludicrous came out I, when once yeah came on like we were we were good and it was fine but luda rocking um, the afro for the first time since like fast and furious 2 i swear yeah yeah bless ludicrous good stuff there. we're having the debate does taylor get a ring the a super bowl ring the super she, bowl oh well well that the the other ring that's a that's a whole other conversation and someone else is gonna have that out it's not us I mean, they might offer it because they, they'll give everybody in the office one. And she might just be like, what am I supposed to do with this? I, 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 I'm a billionaire. I don't need this. Just hawk your wares. It's fine. She, I think she's going to get a ring. I legitimately do. She's a big part of that team as anybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, hey, keep, keep everybody motivated. She was down in the beers last night. That, after that first half, I don't blame her. You know, she's Neither did I. Because, yeah. Lord, they... Through three quarters, I was like, mm, I don't know, guys. I I, I love my team, but th- this is the this was by far the worst offense Mahomes had to work with since he started as a pro. And sitting there after three quarters, it's like Niners are driving. You couldn't get more than three points in the first half. I'm not I'm not so confident. And then they throw it to a guy who started the season on the Jets. And that's that's how we wrap this whole thing up. I love it. And they understood the overtime rules where apparently the 49ers did not, which that's just poor coaching. What can you do? So so I, I'm not sure what I'm looking forward to more. People folding themselves into a pretzel trying to say, no, Brock Purdy is elite. He just looked kind of <laughs> mediocre in that game. Or Kyle Shanahan blowing his third Super Bowl lead of his career. And I think they- to explain why he's still great. Hold on. Are you I think- scoops here? Are you trying to say Brock Purdy is all elite and he's going to AW? Is that what we're doing here? I I mean, if, if Tony wants to improve at quarterback, he might want to look at Purdy. But I think Trevor Lawrence still beats him, though. So, you know, he, he's, I, not doing, he's not doing jobs for anybody. 
I, I think that the game plan in the second half was weird. They kept throwing the ball with Purdy. I was like, you have Christian McCaffrey. What, do, what are you guys doing? And you have the lead. Why are you throwing the ball? And, and the moment down? they start pitching, like when they started driving late in the third, it was because they just kept pitching it to McCaffrey. He gets seven or eight yards of carry. And I'm like, okay, we're screwed because we yeah. can't stop this. And then they got went away from it. And then the blocked field goal or the blocked extra point. I yeah. pretty much swung things because it's a completely different game if that doesn't get blocked. But yeah, the I put the last night's game more on Shanahan and his weird let's throw the ball on every down while we have the lead instead of utilizing the best running back in the league to continue to churn yards and burn clock. Weird game plan. Weird. But Jeremy, what, what what team do you fall for? under because oh. uh, you got the you got the thunder i get for basketball i get that yes yeah where, where's well, the where's the loyalty line? oh fuck unfortunately it's with the carolina panthers and they're oh, terrible man. yeah yeah although well, we'll bring up the super chat now because uh, it's relevant uh cody willis says saw a pick of young lambs i post the pick of 2006 me with uh aj styles samoa joe christopher daniels socal vows at a tna event in north carolina i was wearing a cane tag yes i was wearing Carolina Hurricanes hat. That was the year they won the Stanley Cup. Because uh, I was in North Carolina, uh, raised, not born there. So I would go to games. We had like season tickets to to Canes games. So that was my my hockey fix. Even though I was an Avs fan. So when I wasn't cheering for the Avs, I would root for the Canes because I would just went to all the games and I didn't want to just cheer for nobody. Um, so yeah, I, I wore I wore Canes hat. Now that I as I got older, I started rooting more and more for the Avs and went to less Hurricanes games. Like, well, I don't really care for this team anymore. I'm not going to the games live, so I don't really care to really cheer for them. So there we go. Yeah, the Panthers suck. We don't need to, to talk about that. Let's let's move Your on. Your owner but, throws drinks at fans. Yeah, yeah. They're worst team in the league this year and don't even have the first overall pick to, to show up for. Just a god-awful team. Um, Connor, what made sure. you decide to go into the world of wrestling and leave the world of wrestling media well i don't know if i i think people who watch this might know me from a, a bit of my background before i was with cbs sports i was with comicbook.com and for about four straight years i was leading the charge there for the pro wrestling coverage and absolutely loved it um the only thing was was after a few years you know the burnout kind of starts to settle in where you you see the pattern of how a year and covering wrestling goes now right now is a very exciting time ask me in september and i, I want to bang my head against a wall because there's nothing and one of the companies deliberately just kind of coasts because hey we had our summer slam we don't have to really worry about anything until the rumble we'll pretend to make you care about survivor series but it's a half-hearted attempt so the the burnout just kind of started to set in and i'm like you know I, I gotta go try something else and thankfully you know, comic book falls under the same company umbrella as CBS. So I was able to pretty seamlessly make that transfer from one to the other, where now I'm I'm helping a little bit out with the wrestling side, but I'm also helping, you know, NHL, NASCAR, any women's bat women's college basketball, anything that falls through the cracks that the bigger desks won't get. So we wrote some NFL stuff last night. Anytime there's a Taylor Swift story, if you see it on CBS Sports, it's probably my fault. Um, but why might I have been hired for this role? I don't know, man. You you should have gone for that Taylor Swift beat reporter that the Tennessean hired because that I mean, was who who said I didn't go for it. it. I okay, just well, clearly didn't get it. Sean would have fully supported you on that. That's that's yeah, the best. Thing. I believe it. I believe yeah. it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So uh, made that pivot, and while all that was happening, um, I was working one day and this was early 2022 and jerry lynn posts an announcement to his twitter that he is launching a wrestling school and my cat found a hanger on the door and he is really trying to get his hands on it so pardon me one second guys i want to just gotta go shoot fight the cat i want right to see now. the cat get the hanger <laughs> what happens next no no cat no and then he overpowers him strangles him out and, oh my god he choked him out ah! I got it. Oh, oh, hit him with the shell. <laughs> wow. Not a blue shell. It's a, it's a Bowser shell. Yeah, I found that at Target yesterday. Could could not resist. Um, anyway, so 
I get a tweet, uh, Jerry Lynn saying, hey, I'm opening up a wrestling school in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Well, if you know your Jarrett country, you know that Hendersonville is about 10 minutes away from Nashville. So I'm like, when the hell am I ever going to get this opportunity? I go there. I meet with the owner, a guy named AJ Gallant. He trained uh, alongside guys like Brian Danielson and Brian Kendrick uh, when Shawn Michaels first opened his wrestling school in Texas back in the late 90s. And I go to him. I'm just like, look. I'm up for whatever you guys want. I can be a manager. I can be a commentator. I can be a ring announcer. I just, I want to be involved in this. I don't want to necessarily be a wrestler because I did eight years of rugby, got built up some injuries from that. Don't really want to make those worse. And I'm thinking he's just going to make me like a ring announcer, something simple. And he's like, I got an idea for, I got an idea for a character. How good's your promo? I cut it for him and From there, it led to what you see now, which is Mr. Connor Casey, this kingpin type, leading a faction called the Syndicate, wanting to take over FXC and be the people in charge. And uh, yeah, we made our uh, debut last November here in Hendersonville, had a sold out crowd of almost 400 people. And uh, we're back for show number two here on Sunday. And then we've got shows lined up uh, for the next few months. So it's, it's exciting times. Also at that show is the debut of Brandon B.D. Davis. Yes, it is. Some people may have seen the viral footage that went by of John Cena giving him some advice and then Batista wanting to give him advice and then B.D. being like, my my boss is going to kill me if you do this. Uh, what's your experience working with B.D.? Do you do you know him well? Is it someone that uh, you get a, an opportunity to hang out with him? What's- oh, Brandon's great. I've known him since I started a comic book. Um, he's been like the face of that website for years. Anytime there's um, a big media event for movies or television, he's the guy that's on the red carpet. He's the one that's going to all the press junkets and the big one-on-one interviews. Um, and he has proudly just led the charge for that place. And he is one of the most hardworking guys I know. And he loves what he does, and he's really good at it. So what, watching him uh, grow over the years has been awesome. And kind of on a whim, I told him about the school when I started, you know, training there and work, kind of learning the ropes. And he was just like, oh, I'd love to try that. And I'm like, dude, come on out. I'll, I'll introduce you to AJ. We'll get this thing going. And he took to it right away. And there's, um, I got footage on my phone. I know he has footage of it on his where, you know, we're going through sequences. We're, we're putting holds on each other. And he, it was pretty seamless that he took to it so well. And the fact that he was able to learn while also juggling a schedule that has you on the road at least three days a week for, for his day job, you know, that's, it, it, there's real dedication there. So when he got to be kind of the host of the first show, uh, land a flawless drop kick on uh, old Leroy Jones and then set the stage for this match, I'm like, he's going to kill it. I, I have every bit of confidence in that. And I'm glad, and I'm seeing John Cena and Batista talk about it. I mean, you can't get any bigger than that. You know, two of the biggest stars of my childhood being like, Hey, I know about the show you're on this week. I'm like, can't tell me nothing. Uh, someone else who is on this show, uh, Davey Richards, a mm-hmm. uh, lot thought out about him. I believe this is his first match since kind of the, Big allegations came out against him. Uh, I know you don't book the shows, but being involved in a show with mm. Davy Richards, any reservations or second thoughts? So I'll, I'll say this on Davy. Um, I've never met the man, and I, I I saw the reports. I saw his statements. I don't claim to know the details and the ins and outs of uh, what went down in his personal life that had him step away from the business last year. And like you said, Jeremy, wasn't was not my call to bring him in. I'm not the booker, even though my character that you see would absolutely love to be the booker. That's not my call right now. So as far as Davey goes, I'll just say I I don't know the details. I don't know what happened. I don't know his situation. And I'll say to the people that maybe see this lineup and they see Davey and they have reservations, just know it's your prerogative if you don't want to watch and I'm not going to sit here and you know shake my fists and say how dare you not try this because if you have a problem with somebody you have a problem with them and i'm not going to change your mind i will say that apart from davy this lineup is full of guys many of whom this is uh their first year in the business and they've put in a lot of work and a lot of time to try and make this the best show possible 
So if you're if you're on the fence about the show, I would say still give it a look because there's a lot of good people here who are trying to do their absolute best and put on something really special. We appreciate you commenting on it. I mean, I had to ask about it. That was the. It's understood. I get it. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that more folks haven't. And like, I know when WrestleZone wrote us up, it, the headline was Davy Richards is back. It's like, okay, I, I thought that would be the headline catcher for lots of places, but no. Nah. I mean, when, when I saw it, I was like, oh, Davy Richards is on this show. I, I, I love Connor. I'm going to support Connor. Don't know how I feel about Davey being on this show. I mean, I do know how I feel, but I don't know how I feel about supporting the show overall with Davey being on it. Um, but I obviously wish you and, and everything you're doing the absolute best with Appreciate this. And it, yeah, you don't you don't book the shows. Sometimes people get brought in who maybe they shouldn't get brought in. But uh, you know, let's let's just let's fantasy book for a second. Shoot. Syndicates. Mm. If you guys were to add anybody else from this lineup who who's a standout performer in fxc that you guys would want to add other than your own of course so the the irony is is that we're facing we're i've got brock o'grady fighting colby carter this week and colby is this local just super athlete you know he's about i want to say six he's about six foot he's half samoan he's built like an absolute powerhouse uh, he took to wrestling so quickly. He started only a couple months before I did, and he's already getting a lot of attention from promotions around here and a little bit of the national scene. Like if you look closely, he's already popped up on AEW. He's popped up on NWA, um, you know, and, and big names have already kind of taken attention to him of like, okay, let's see how you develop. I would love for him to be one of the key players in the syndicate. His problem is some misguided sense of justice where he needs to be the good guy and be the local hero. And I think the sooner he figures out that that's only going to get you so far in life, the sooner we can talk business. Why, Connor, what has happened to you to where you're you're such a jerk now? No, like, I like this. I like this guy. I like this Connor Casey. This is the Connor Casey I want to. I want to have a drink with. I want to hang out with. I want to sell I saw, balls with. I saw shades of this person when we did the the well famous pillar pillar to post and your feud with Alex McCarthy. I saw shades of I, this. We we never did have that match. What happened? No. What happened was, I think when was this? Oh, it was so long ago. At this point, what happened was Jeremy got really burnt out on wrestling. And I just decided I cannot do all of these shows and try to organize all the stuff like I thought I could. I think it was the time like the punk stuff was happening as well, because this is like two years ago at mm -hmm. this point. So, yeah, I think it was when punk did his all out speech pipe bomb, whatever you want to call it. And sure. I was so burnt out on just covering wrestling. You mentioned it, Connor, of like covering it and like it seems fun now like no now it sucks right now with all the stuff that there is to cover it's awful to cover right now um it's very easy to get burnt out from doing all yeah. this and i i would rather be busy than bored and yeah so for me right now would be like you know some of this is you know mentally and you know kind of draining on your soul a bit especially with the vince mcmahon stuff but other but it's like hey let's talk about okada let's talk about mercedes the Rock, Roman, Cody, Seth, whatever the hell that is. That's the fun stuff. It's when I'm sitting there on Raw in October having to watch three hours live and going, okay, I'm supposed to care about gender right now. Should I? Nope. But they ain't going to change anything for a month, so this is what I'm stuck with. That That's when I'm just like, let me do anything else, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, it's, and, and to answer your question about, like, you know, people in the wrestling media, they know me as a nice guy. And when I'm wearing that hat, that is true. When I put on the black and white tracksuit, different guy comes out, and you'll see. My God, the black and white comes out. <laughs> you might as well play Voodoo Child, just play the guitar to the ring. Yeah. So it's more of a, it's honestly, I've, there's one suit where I just straight up raided Two Faces Closet. It, it's black and white split down the middle. And I, I, as soon as I found that, I was like, I need this. But now it's like, you know, I'm able to move a lot more in like a tracksuit kind of thing. So I've got, I just, 
anytime I see black and white patterns on something, I get it. And <laughs> I got a closet full of it now. But before we let you go, I do I do want to ask about the infusion of a comic book character type presentation in wrestling. And like, is that something that you are always trying to strive for? Or do you have like other visions of how wrestling should be presented in your eyes? I would argue pro wrestling is comic books. It, it's big characters with lots of, you know, different motivations and depth to them. They've got immediately recognizable looks and it's like comics where the story never really ends because it's always time for a reboot or an event or new characters to be introduced. Old characters should die and come back. Comics never end and neither do wrestling. So it's funny how they kind of sit perfectly on these this identical track where, hey, we've always got to come up with new stuff. And that's that's where the fun happens. And it's why so many wrestlers now, I think, they're huge fans of comics anime video games it's why they add it to their characters it's why they add it to their gear and their presentation it, it's it you don't have to dig too far to figure out wait why does this keep happening in the end we're all nerds and so when when they were like hey how do you want to build this this mr connor casey character and i'm just like okay vincent d'onofrio's kingpin thanos specifically the mcu version and dutch vanderlyn from red dead 2 and I'm sure if guys from older generations, if I told them that, they'd slap me upside the head and say, who the hell are those guys? But anybody my age can be like, no, I get it. So it works. The, the biggest shocking one for me was when Moxley came out at Wrestle Kingdom with the, the cosplay from the, I, I forget it now, but the, the red it, mask. It was Red Hood. And when he's like, yeah, Jason Todd's my favorite Robin, I'm like, that makes so much sense for you, Mox. <laughs> I was like, where, where did Moxley start reading comic books? I know he's mentioned in the past, but like you never thought of Moxley as like, yeah, I'm going to do a comic book tribute gear as part of the entrance. Just doesn't seem like it at all. But yes, I, I, everyone reads these comic books. We all grew up, I, I assume, comic book fans. I, I mean, just... Roman Reigns had the gold glove when he first came out as Tribal Chief and everyone went, oh, you're Thanos. And he's like, no, -uh, th this just <laughs> happened by itself. And then he immediately <laughs> turns it red when people kept asking. Him. It's like, gotcha, bud. We, we couldn't find any gold shoes. Uh, it just matches the red shoes that I wear. It's all and it's up. why I only have one specifically on the left hand. <laughs> no, these these stones don't ask about those. Those, those, are, <laughs> those are tribal stones. <laughs> collecting anyway. titles now like it's tribal stones well yeah. that's the thing they're gonna get the little like mini titles and they're gonna start putting them on the belt oh, gonna be and he's gonna legit. punch cody with it and be like there's your story to finish oh i hope he beats cody just, just implants wwe logos in his face oh let's go it's the right. rock basically did to cody slapping him across the face he he, he went to the five finger with the five finger side of the face the next one was the unity that would have been the next. He bit slaps there. him, and everyone's got the freeze frame of his fingers. They look like they have biceps on. So them. Big. <laughs> I'm like, that's what deadlifting does to you, people. <laughs> Clubbing them. I saw that, and I was like, my god, got to get them fingers checked out. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of getting checked out, go check out FXE Wrestling. It's this Sunday, February Sunday. You'll get it Sunday right. at the Bluegrass Yacht and Country Club in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Connor Casey's going to be there representing the Syndicate, bringing his associates. And he's gonna he's gonna do it all. Just plug them, plug everything, take them home. Connor Casey, you got it. Well, you can check us out at fxcwrestlingnetwork.com. Uh, we've also got our social media. It's all FXC Wrestling on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I think they're finally setting up the TikTok. And as for the show on Sunday, while I don't have the details yet, I do know a live stream of this will be available uh, through Vimeo. So if you're not in the Nashville area, but maybe you saw this and you still want to check it out. Uh, we'll have more details for that here for you in the coming days. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Connor Casey CBS. Uh, normally I'm the fun loving, you know, happy guy that you always like to see uh, right now, celebrating my chief's victory. But when it's, when it comes time for a show, uh, a, a meaner side comes out. Connor Casey's turned into a jerk and it's, it's sad to see, but. I now I just it. need to manage Sean Ross Sapp. That's that's what will make some. Oh, real that's good. That get a lot go. of people mad. I get a lot of people mad. Oh, let's go. Can you get a tag team going with like represent a tag team with Sean? See, Sean and Blank from he, Also he, in Media. 
he has joked about it where he's like the wrestling journalist faction will be the most over thing ever and i'm like man you've got me you can get john alva to do it be another manager yeah. he's the wrestler we can get filthy tom and then it's like just, tom waller we're yeah. just gonna do bring mma luke stuff <laughs> bring, bring luke owen over yeah do a thing yeah I, I want muscle man malcolm to get in muscle there and just yeah. power slam some poor fool mm -hmm. just straight Please. up just deadlift german suplex him because he's you know we're doing this. We'll get SP3 in the ring, too. He can be the test dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we sign up SP3? Hold on. Hold on now. I got to defend SP3. Oh, well, he's here often enough. I just wanted to see if he's still watching. Oh, I, I got to defend SP3. We're not going to slam SP3. Oh, right my now. God. Yes, you call it the paywall. <laughs> oh, we did it. Yeah, Simon Miller's another guy you could bring <sighs> over easily. Yeah. Gosh, I... I want, I want si I I think Simon is trying to get with Super Eye Patch Wolf as his manager right now, and that just sounds like the most fun thing ever. So if you if you follow British Indies, uh, you might have seen some of that, and I I, I want that. We uh, we could make this happen. I feel you guys got to make a bunch of towns though. Are you guys up for making these towns? That's of the hard course. life, right there. Well, the, the best thing is that we're all spread out. So yeah. we've all got different cities that we can call. It's like, hey, this is our hometown for this week. And it's New York, so it's Andrew's area. Oh, for... The booking fee on this is going to be insane, though. Flying all you guys in from all these places. Yeah, you got, you got to handle flight. You got to handle hotel. Because we don't show up day of. That's just yeah. irresponsible. You got to show up the night before. Wake up early. Have a have a have a, a media day junket where wrestlers are randomly taken in and out of order as you stand in a row and wait to try and talk to them. You maybe get three minutes and then the show happens later that day. Uh, and then you come home before the show goes live. Yeah. <laughs> no, Sean, 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 will be back, Sean will be back in his studio before the show happens. <laughs> They'll be like, where'd he go? And like, he did his, he fulfilled his contractual obligations. Yeah, he's back in Kentucky. Um, uh, I, I feel like we could probably put this together at some point somewhere in the world. We shall see. Um, Connor, we appreciate you joining us. Um, yeah, you've plugged everything. You can leave. I'm just yeah, appreciate you guys. <laughs> ah, yeah. All right, yeah. We'll uh, we love you. Connor. Thank you, Connor. It's always great to see your beautiful face. Congratulations to the Jeffs. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye, um, buddy. Connor Casey. Love it. <sighs> uh, Sean dropped in for like two seconds. I'm sure he's going to show up again because we'll talk about Okada and that was, it's the thumbnail. So he's probably going to want to talk about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so we'll save, maybe we'll save the Okada talk for a few minutes from now. Uh, and hopefully Sean will, will pop back in and say hi and, and we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll hit a couple super chats as well, by the way, big thanks to Connor Casey. And of course, Andrew Zarian for joining us as always. It's always fun when, when our pals come around, Ali Khan uh, sent a super chat while we were talking about, the Danielson and the book and all that stuff and said, I really respect Tony Khan, but I think it would benefit AEW if he steps back from booking and brings in Scott Demore. A little change on top could help. This isn't something a lot of people have said. And honestly, I agree with the replies that come with it, which is typically he ain't going to do it. It's not going to happen. Tony loves to be, you know, booking. That's his, that's his, his fun. That's what he likes to do. And Scott, again, we don't know where Scott would fit or if he would want to fit in that setting. Uh, your thoughts, Jeremy. It's always strange to me when people are like, Tony Khan needs to take a step back from booking AEW and uh, change things up and stuff. Because I don't think that's true. I think he can take a step back from ROH. I think that's something to where maybe it would benefit to have someone else run that. It's not, people got to understand that, yes, the final say is through Tony, but it's not like it's just him putting all of this together every single week. Yeah, Hassan says it. Like, it's not him putting it together every week. He's the only person doing it. He has said it. He There's a committee of people. There are creative people. He takes a lot of input from wrestlers as well. He gets the final say. So whatever makes it on air is, it's going to fall on him. But it's not like it's just him. He is a maniac being up, you know, 23 hours in the day trying to put stuff together. But it's not like it's just him doing all of this. I do think that I do think that, yeah, he could ROH. There's not a whole lot of care and attention to that. Would it benefit if somebody else came in and that was their sole focus? 
yes, I do think that would be helpful. I don't think Tony needs to take a step back from anything when it comes to AEW. I think by and large, he does a good part. Last year had some rough stretches. He's listening to the wrong people. Stuff didn't hit the way he was hoping it would hit. But overall, there's been a lot more hits than misses when we're talking about the the stretch of five years in AEW. Yeah, no, I I, I fully agree with what you're saying, especially the listening to I I, I won't say the wrong people, but clearly it wasn't what AEW was built on and what it was going to continue being compared to the first few years uh, prior. Yeah, with Tony, I don't think the answer is, you know, Tony needs to step back. I think Tony does a lot, and that's fine. But he, like we said, he has a committee. He has people behind him. He has people that work with him. It feels a lot more like a collaborative effort than anything else, uh, and that Tony is willing to listen to those people in the room with him. Like you said, Jeremy, at one point, I wish there were more people who would say why when it comes to certain things that get booked, but that is a more, that, that's a different conversation. And as to whether or not Scott would, would fit in there, I, again, I, Scott would probably fit in with just about any company that he would work for. Whether he would want to do it is a whole separate question. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, I don't think Tony needs to take a step back at all. And whatever Scott Tamore wants to do, I don't know. Uh, I think he was at Border City Wrestling this past weekend. You know, he still runs, I, I think, that promotion. I assume he'll continue to be heavily involved there. I don't know what Scott Demore wants to do. This will find oh. out in the coming months. Also, if, if Ring of Honor is being presented as like Ring of Honor, as like a wrestling show that is presented as a as a wrestling heavy program, I don't know if Scott's the guy to do that. Because Scott is very like if you watch an episode of TNA, if you watch an episode of impact, like you kind of understand the way that Scott and his vision worked. And that was the wrestling is good. The re- and, and good to great. And then the backstage stuff, like they do the comedy, they do the undead realm. Like it's very variety show. Like whereas ring of honor is very much, you know, with the exception of a couple of segments here and there, like go to the ring, have the match. This is how it is. Now go to the ring, have the match. And we build to, the next big pay-per-view when it comes along. I don't know if that's, that's how Scott would want to do this. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Jeff Valley driver saying Scott looks similar to NXT. And in some ways that's true. There's a, there's a heavy entertainment aspect that came in from the TNA impact uh, version. So yeah. Ring of honor is not exactly booked the same way. I don't know if ring of honor does have a great vision right now. And that's part one that's of the fair. problems with ring of honor. They have a champion who is a, triple crown champion who never shows up. They have a television champion who's losing to Chris Jericho on AEW TV. They have tag team champions who are there. Sometimes the trios titles are pretty meaningless. Their champions don't show up. It's the Athena show. It's what it's yeah. been. The, the Dalton castle, Johnny TV, John Morrison stuff is fun. I like that stuff. Ethan page got this big win for against Tony Neese in the I quit match. What did that lead to? Like, it's not like he got elevated into a world title match. Ring of Honor is, they do the women very well there. Otherwise, it's a a show that just has some matches. And then when the pay-per-view finally rolls around, they do a halfway decent job of trying to make it make sense and then throw on a bunch of AEW people and say, please pay. Well, now that it's on Honor Club, it's like, you can pay less now. Just go for it. No, I agree. Yeah, like people are saying in the chat, you're not wrong. It's just, it's a great women, it's a great women's wrestling program, especially the this coming week is going to be a lot of uh, TV title matches, TV title tournament matches. So that's that's neat. But yeah, you're right. It is a company lacking an identity or a a sub brand of AEW that's lacking identity, but also feels like it's kind of a, it's that developmental stepping stone that doesn't exist in when, when, when AEW purchased, when Tony Khan purchased ring of honor, that was the story that came out was that they were looking at it as a potential developmental territory, not like an NXT, but more like a place where independent wrestlers or people who don't have TV chops or TV experience come and learn how to work a televised match. They learn how to work camera. They learn how to work with commercials and hitting time cues that 
kind of stayed the same, but it never became, it, it, it became like, we want it to be important, but it's not important, but we want it to be important, but it's not important. Look at the champion we have. Look at this guy, look at that guy. But it would never find its identity. And now we're in the same spot that we've been for the last three years. And like Jeremy said, it just becomes, you know, there's a pay-per-view that comes up. We'll toss some AW people on and we'll hope that you buy it. And then the, the venue we're running seats 5,000. If we get 2,500, then we're over the moon. So that's uh, that's kind of where we're at with, with Ring of Honor. They just need to I'm, figure out what they need to do. I've always said with Ring of Honor is much like we, when we talked about the AW women's division, when people were you know, wanted more out of that. It's a, the same thing with ring of honor, identify who you're going to build around, keep them as part of ROH. Do not have them on AEW TV taking losses and doing, and, and doing stuff to where they're never on ROH TV. Keep it as separated as possible. And then identify top independent talent that you're going to consistently use and try to get over because they use independent talent and you got a guy like Brian Keith who would be on a ROH TV and then he'd show up on AEW and he'd lose and get the graphic. Uh, they, they do this with a lot of talent, just put them on ROH and have them win a bunch and really build around them. Like this is what they could have done with Brian Keith. Blake Christian is another guy. I think guys like Alec Price and Jordan Oliver would be great in ROH and really just being a staple and a focal point of ROH along with guys like Ethan Page who weren't doing anything on AEW television with a guy potentially like Kyle Fletcher who they kind of doing stuff on AEW TV with, but they're just, he just loses when he's on AEW TV. So just keep him on ROH TV. Find your undisputed kingdom. Fine. Put them on roh tv because right now the aw stuff that ain't hitting they they've done a couple of matches a couple of proven ground matches on aid yeah. on ring of honor tv but you, but i i largely agree with what you're saying and where you're going i just want to i just want them to keep the brands as separated as possible because when it bleeds over it it, it roh comes off so secondary and i don't think that's what they want but that's how it comes off a lot of times yeah. And in the chat, King Potato, uh, Andrew Zarian's cousin, of course, uh, is mentioning that uh, Dark and Elevation were basically what ROH was when they rebranded or rebooted ROH. And that's kind of what I was getting to is they got rid of Dark and Elevation mostly because it felt like they couldn't get that on TV. But because of the Ring of Honor name, it felt like Tony was trying to get that onto TV and get a deal out of it because they knew that whatever they were doing with Dark and Elevation wasn't going to be entertaining enough or just enough of a brand that got people invested to to roll with it on a televised contract whereas ring of honor you can do that especially if you're running pay-per-views based on the ring of honor name i'd also like when it comes to roh is make it a more concise show because you're just throwing on matches to do like five second matches on television doesn't really help a whole lot of people. You look at the ROH lineup any single week and you can pretty much tell just looking at the lineup. Okay. Kind of know who's going to win here. Match might be good. Maybe it'll lead to something. People will get victories, which is cool, but there ain't the stakes aren't very high on this. And this is what happens when you're just trying to fill two hours each week. You're just going to get stuff like that. Make it a concise, like, one-hour show. This is why this is what people have loved about Rampage. It's like, hey, we got some good matches. Maybe one's, like, kind of just a showcase match. But otherwise, we got some matches with some purpose here. We advance some stories every now and again. And we're building stuff. Like, the, this is what's hitting with Rampage right now for a lot of people, myself included. Like it's a nice, concise, the, the fastest one hour in television. What the fuck they call it? Like it's a nice show in one hour. I, I'd like ROH to kind of do that instead of this week's episode is 90 minutes. This week's episode is 3000 minutes because we had to tape. You know, we had four hours of taping. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to. I hope that they do two weeks of content out of that because the fact that I do a, a post show that comes after Ring of Honor 
they go live at nine usually. And then by 10 o'clock, we crest crest the star myself go live and talk about impact. We take over and we talk about TNA impact. I hate the episodes that are three hours long because it completely derails what we do on our side of things. That's my own personal gripe, but I agree that it just a concise show would go so much further. We'll see if anything changes with our, which I don't expect any of this to happen by the way. No, but, but if Tony gets a TV deal for ring of honor, it might change how the show is booked or how not necessarily how it's booked, but how it's presented because they'll be given a, you know, if it's a streaming only deal, then they can continue doing what they're doing. But if it's a television deal, then they're going to have to deal with uh, a time constraint. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, why Solable sent us this, which he said, this is an hour into the show. So I, before you get into the topics, <laughs> so say guys, I hope we all had a great weekend before you get into all the other topics. I wanted to know if you saw the new Japan shows, Zack Sabre Jr. And Brian was a chef's kiss. And that cage match was dumb in the best ways. I haven't seen everything yet. I need to go and finish wow. watching. It's been a busy weekend when the kids home all weekend, I don't get a lot of time to breathe. And when like my computer is off when that kid's around the house. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that. I know you saw the matches. I've seen the, the, the pieces of it. What, uh, what did we think of the new Japan shows? Um, I loved Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre jr. It was 15 minutes. To, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was like over a half hour though. And everyone knows that my, my wheelhouse is like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so, but otherwise that match, absolutely fantastic. That it was just counters exchanges, neither guy being able to, to really gain an advantage. Danielson working over the leg. Um, just, it was everything you would expect a, a Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. Match week. I'm not the match person. I don't like, Talking about five stars, six stars, all of that stuff. Uh, the cage match was wacky because, you know, you think of a cage match and it's like, oh, this cool, like big cage. This was just like, this is a fence extended guardrail around the ring. It was the kennel from hell without the hell. Yeah. It was so like when I saw the setup, I was like, huh? What, what kind of weird little cage are we doing here? It probably worked better for this kind of match um because it was a a war games kind of style match it was a little long for me again every my wheelhouse is my wheelhouse i can i can accept longer matches uh but nine out of ten times they've got to involve brian danielson uh this match did not you know it's it's an hour long match and it felt just about every bit of an hour i will also say i was probably not the uh the target audience for this match in I don't have the emotional investment in United Empire and War Dogs and Osprey. I don't. And I think if you have the emotional investment in it, it's probably going to hit a lot better for you. I love all the crazy stuff they did like that. I don't need emotional investment for that. Like Alex Coughlin, uh, just, having the two t- kendo sticks and just being like tossing them. And then they just get beat up with the kendo sticks until he fires back on them. Like I can appreciate the crazy moments Osprey with the ladder stuff. Like, like I can appreciate all of that. But I think if you have like an emotional investment into Osprey leaving into the story of United empire into uh bullet club war dogs, this match is probably a lot more, up your alley where if you don't have that you can appreciate maybe 64 minutes of like wacky crazy fun but also it's 64 minutes yeah that's a long match that i will probably scrub through but uh, it sounds like, so it, what i'll watch it in 17 minute increments just for you jeremy <laughs> well i'll do it like wwe speed every five minutes i'll just start a new match <laughs> anyway uh yeah it, it looks like it was a lot of fun though uh but that's it 65 minutes is a, lo- is a long long show uh long match i'll take a look i'll probably watch it who am i kidding i will watch it it's wrestling uh i'm gonna just hit this last super chat from will chisholm coming from the ring of honor stuff what is ring of honor because week to week it changes by tone and time it feels bipolar at times i mean it's pre-taped they tape it, you know, usually before and after collision. And sometimes a little bit of dynamite as well gets tossed in there. A little bit of, of taping from dynamite gets tossed in. But yeah, that's that's just what it is. It's a it's a show that they tape around the shows that they're airing live. 
and they produce it into a show that they air on Thursdays. And it doesn't need to have a time limit because it's on streaming and it's on their platform and they can do whatever they want. So some weeks they're going to deem it important and some weeks they're just going to put on matches and y'all will watch it. And that's that. <laughs> much else to add about Ring of Honor. They announced like that women's TV title tournament like two months ago, I feel like. And it's yeah. finally just now starting this Thursday. Yeah. And again, it does feel bipolar in that regard. You kind of start things up and then you hit it again. This, again, it comes down to listening to people in the room and having the why person. So uh, anyway, let's speaking of why. I just don't think there's a lot of care in ROH. And right. th that's where there's somebody who maybe it's like, eh, maybe I can take this over and put some care into it. I would also argue like it doesn't need a lot of care right this minute compared to the care that you need to go into collision and dynamite because you're up on a TV contract here. You need to make your main television programming rampage included that much more attractive so that you could potentially put that care. It, it's again, it, I make this illusion a lot. It's spinning plates. And sometimes this, a plate is going to spin a little less stronger than the other one. And right now the ROH plate just isn't spinning as strongly as what they need dynamite collision and rampage to spin so that they can get the best possible TV deal. And that's kind of the way it is. It's just money. Fair. Speaking of money, Kazuchika Okada, the Rainmaker, we reported on FightfulSelect.com, best five bucks in the business. He's expected to sign with AEW. He's expected. He's heading there. Sean Ross Sapp broke the story, as as per normal. Uh, it's a big deal. It, I can't tell you that I'm shocked by it. Um, I know that there's certainly a part of me that still has that what if, and the matches that he could have done in a place like like WWE, for example, and this isn't, uh, uh, oh my God, he should have signed here. No, it's more like the, the what if always makes me wonder, but he's going to go to a place where he knows people, where he's experienced the culture there, where he's experienced the wrestler in the, in the locker room. And also it's a different, it's a different world. It's a different game compared to what WWE is expecting out of their talent in terms of contract and, uh, and being on the road. So Okada's doing his thing he's going to go to, to AEW, but that's the accounts. What do we think? I think this was obvious from the start. My God, um, I can't believe your TNA was on. They, were, they had him. They had I, him. AW always felt like Okada's destination. I've said many times, like I was more curious as to what Okada would be like in WWE because that's an environment we've never seen him in. We've seen him in AW. I generally know what it looks like. Um, it, it's going to be great. Tony Khan loves him. He, he's going to have great matches. He's going to be a, at the top of the card. I like we said it before this report came out. I know now the report makes it more or less official. Nothing's official until they actually appear. But I said it last week. I think they're going to do Okada Mercedes at Big Business. This is what, I've, what I said last week. So nothing's really changed on this stance. I let, Let's go in a different direction on this. Because I don't know how much there's to add with like Okada. No, fantasy, no, if you got a fantasy book Okada in WrestleMania, he makes his appearance at WrestleMania, not AW. It's a big swerve. Is WWE not an attractive destination? Are they not offering? Are they broke? Like, are they not offering a lot of money? Are they just thinking like, here's our offer? You're going to get this. Here's what it comes with. Take it or leave it. And then Tony is, of course, like, no, I really want you. I'm going to up this offer. But WWE, it feels like they're just like relying on we're WWE. We're the Lakers. You either want to come here. You either want to be a Laker. You want to be a Yankee or you don't. And then they're not worried about throwing a bunch of money at people because they've missed out. The Jay White thing, I think, was a hiring freeze. I that yeah. I, I'm gonna put him full in them. Yeah. Osprey, though, Mercedes, Okada, Camille is reportedly now not going there. Like they seems like they're missing out on some pretty big free agents, and WWE's getting them or AEW's getting them. So with Camille, I can just tell you right off the bat, that was an NXT contract that was offered, and NXT contracts aren't exactly as lucrative as the other names would have been offered when it comes to a free agent signing for main roster, right? Okada would get a different deal. 
uh, Mercedes would obviously get a different deal. Anyone who's been on their TV and coming back would get a different deal. So Camille is a little, it, I think that's a different conversation. Uh, okay. Could WWE throw out a big figure and say, Hey, come to my company? Yes. Do they choose to? I don't know. But the question also is, are we finding the value as our company with these people with, with these particular wrestlers we're talking about, these free agents, or do we continue building with some of the people that we bring in from a program like NIL or from our developmental program where we can bring them in, literally build them from the ground up? And again, there are a lot of there are a lot of instances where the NIL program, or at least the PC, hasn't developed the same quality of wrestler as they expected. They had very lofty goals for the PC, and they haven't exactly hit at all cylinders. But as they've kind of moved and navigated their waters, WWE started spending a lot more time working on the talent that they bring in and start building from the ground up. So it's I think it's a tale of two very different companies, two very different presentations, and how they want to spend their money. The other option is also WWE has a public option that they have to contend with. And that is, why are you spending this much on this person? The perception is you're overspending on talent and not putting it back into the business and making the investors happy. If you're not making the investors happy, then the, we have a different problem. Whereas with AEW, you don't have that problem. You can shell out as much as you want, get as many people as you want, and no one's going to bat an eyelash as long as the, the programming is good. And it, otherwise, it's just, it's not, it's not your money. You're not, you're not investing, so it doesn't matter. So I think at the end of the day, it's just, they bring in the people that, it, it, sorry, WWE will bring in and possibly keep the people that they deem necessary. And again, this is they, not me. And that they will let people go kind of like your Laker analogy. Like we want the best of the best or who we deem the best of the best. And this is the offer. And that's that. And I don't mind that Okada and WWE. It interested me from a match standpoint, from a presentation standpoint, because it's completely different than what we would see in a place like AEW, which is pretty closer, pretty much closer to what you'd expect to see in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now Okada maybe will cut more promos or have a mouthpiece, whatever it is. It's just a different, again, different presentation, different expectation. They have a different way of building their their programming and building their stars. I do think part of this is also... Uh... We talked about this with the, the Mercedes when a contract negotiations with her reportedly fell apart with WWE. WWE has their hierarchy and their cap on things. Not not like cap, no lie. Like salary cap. Salary cap, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like sports bottle cap. cap. Yes, yes yeah, bottle yeah. cap, yes. They see Mercedes as a certain level I'm not saying they're right or wrong on this i think they're wrong but this is how they see her <laughs> this is how they see you don't her, get to right? slip that in there <laughs> <laughs> they see her as i don't want to use the term but i'm using her, a b plus player right that's where they see her they just paid charlotte flair a plus money they don't want to give someone they perceive as a B plus player, a plus money, because if they pay her Charlotte flair money, then that just raises the cap. Now, what are you paying Becky? Becky's got to get a plus plus money because you've raised it just by paying Mercedes. A Becky might get three a pluses on it. That's how much they got to give her. And I think the same thing happens in the, the men's division. You're going to pay Okada. I don't know what they see, Okada. I don't know what they see, Osprey. I don't. My guess is they are perceived as lower than their own guys, like a Drew McIntyre, whose contract is reportedly coming up, like a Kevin Owens, whose contract we know is coming up. I think that's at the end of this year. He's, I think he signed a three-year deal in 2021. Uh, my time back. that was a whole thing yeah someone yeah. was asking about that earlier i'll look it up while you talk yeah sammy zane another one he signed a new contract same time around kevin it's seth 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 deals coming up this year like we know i think they want to pay those guys their their in-house talent and then maybe if they pay osprey a certain amount of money 
okay, that's only going to raise the value of of Seth, Drew, Kevin, Sammy. That's only going to raise their contracts. And maybe they don't want to raise it past that high. Maybe they just use that money that they're going to pay Osprey. It's like, hey, we're going to pay you this now instead of paying Osprey. And I could also see if like when it comes to negotiations with an Osprey, with an Okada, with a Mercedes, like, hey, Seth Rollins is making this much money. You can't make more than Seth Rollins. I don't make the rules. I do. I'm speaking for Paul here. Like, I, I you can't make as much as him. I used the analogy before of, of the Nathan McKinnon analogy. Nathan McKinnon, highest paid player on the abs. They're going to continue to make him the highest paid player. And they're basically going to put out there, Kel McCarr, you're great. I know they resigned Kale, but like, we can't quite have you making as much as Nathan. Just can't. Miko, you can't make quite as much as Nathan. Nathan's got to be the highest paid player on the team. I imagine they're working in tight, some type of constraint like that. It's like, we can't have you making more than Seth Rollins because that doesn't look good to Seth Rollins. And it's a weird balance that they're seemingly following. And I don't know this to, to be fully true, but this is the fact that they're missing out on these free agents makes me believe that this they do they want to take care of more of the in-house stuff and they have an in-house structure that they are trying to follow. Where AEW is I'll throw all the money at you you need and then it, we'll just go from there and we'll continue to throw it and we'll continue to make it look good. In the AEW wise, it's almost as like we have nothing to lose, which is which is a noble way to look at it because they in some ways they don't have anything to lose as a company. I mean, financially, yes, obviously the cons have plenty to lose, but as a as a company trying to build their business and it's only been five years again, I see compared to TNA's 22 years, WWE is 55, 60 plus years. Like it's 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 a different game that AEW gets to play because they are so new and have so much money to work with. Now, why Solable brings up the idea of, of really establishing a depth chart when you have a lot of all-star players. And I think that's a fair assessment. You have a lot of really, 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 really good wrestlers and good workers on a show that values wrestling above everything else. And again, that's presentation. WWE expects their wrestlers to be not only very good in the ring but also be very good characters and have some crossover appeal and you see that with people we mentioned seth rollins becky lynch uh jade cargill comes over from AEW, and they see the crossover appeal in her and you see it because she's in a super bowl ad immediately bianca belair is another person that you talk about crossover appeal montez ford goes and releases a rap album you know that that kind of appeal is what wwe is after because that lets them cast their branches out into mainstream media and be a different beast. Whereas in AEW, it is, did you take those down and then put them back up? No, I didn't click anything. That's weird. Anyway, uh, whereas in AEW, it is a different beast. It is a wrestling specific presentation. It is a sports wrestling specific presentation. Therefore, what you're, what you want there is what you put on the screen. You put me on the screen. You just popped up. Hope nothing inappropriate was said before that is in like a comparison or anything. Oh no, it was, and that's perfect timing. Thank you. Um, Chad, don't tell him. Chicken, salad. Chicken salad. Chicken uh, salad. Yeah. Nice. Can you tell us your recipe? Huh? Yeah, I go to Vinaigrette Salad Kitchen and I say, "Hey, can I get the classic chicken salad?" And then they give it to me. It's pretty. Cool. <laughs> it's a pretty good recipe. I like Sean it. is WWE be broke. That's what we were discussing. No. <laughs> no, but I mean, this shouldn't be a surprise to a lot of people. Like, I, I don't know if there's any Endeavor influence here, but I mean, Jeremy, you you covered uh, uh, UFC for for quite some time uh, until finally you you were blessed with the ability to not. Yeah. But I mean, they let Francis Ngannou walk out their door. They passed on what would have been probably in this era because their pay per views do so well one of the highest selling pay-per-views that they've ever done, uh, probably a top five pay-per-view of all time, him versus John Jones. And they just let him walk. And that's, that was one of their own guys on top of that. So uh, I don't know, Jeremy, were you surprised by that? Uh, the Nganas? Who the hell told you tonight was open mic night, bitch? 
saw him teeing it up. I saw him tee it up. I watched his eyes track the screen. I saw it coming, Jeremy. How did you not? See he it? read the defense. Use against use against me there. Wow, that shouldn't be even legal. Uh, I was making. Go ahead. I was making the point that it feels like they have almost a cap on things of like we can't pay you more than Seth Rollins because then that establishes a new pay sure. structure that now we have to pay Seth this much. Now we have to pay Kevin this much. And I don't know if they fully want to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I think it's healthy because WWE is white hot right now. They are very hot. And I mean, they took an uh, incredible set of negatives, which are the Vince thing, the lawsuits after a set of positives, the rock joining the board and the Netflix deal, they got hit with another. I mean, it, it was, it's like these peaks and valleys. So you get the rock Netflix thing. Then the Vince stuff drops and it's like, well, how are they going to recover from this? They make the right decision at the Royal rumble. And then they're like, well, how can we screw this up? They do the rock thing. Well, then they come back and they're like, well, let's fix it and make it even bigger than it was before because I've never been a part of a 33, 33, 33 audience. I've been a part of split audiences, but never one that was like, we love and hate all these people. We just want to see them on the screen type of thing. And that's what I got there. And they turned it into an incredible piece of business. Now, uh, I, I thought that SmackDown was an okay follow-up. You had something to fight for on that show. I'm interested in what they do tonight. Raw, Lexington, Rep Arena. I'll, you be be there? There. I'll be there. I'll be doing the post-show live. I've got to drop off some Fightful Awards in about an hour and a half, actually. Almost got it. Almost got it, damn it. That's that's where technology needs to head. It can detect when you're going to cough. So, so you have one of these road pro boards as well over in the other side of the studio right yeah yeah i do i ride this mute button like crazy because of that what do you mean so there's a mute button on my channel i can yeah. just you know i ride it i sit here with my finger on it in case i need to clear my throat or cough or anything like that well mine is almost always in view on like on with the setup that i have so i can't do that so i just try to keep it on the button but yeah, i guess we'll see it ain't so hard just have yeah. to click it. How's it going, uh, fellas? Went to Vegas last week. That was a thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joel, it was funny because as I was there, I stayed at New York, New York, and then I got there and I realized, oh, this is where we went to eat a few years ago. That's right. Yeah. I, I do remember that. I walked through New York, New York uh, when I was there for TNA, and I was like, oh, I remember this place. I was gonna, I was gonna actually hit, hit you up because people know that I, I was playing this game on my phone called My Vegas. And they give you rewards based on your play. Oh, and it includes comp rooms. Damn so it. I was gonna, I was going to ask if you needed a, a comp at Would Park nice. MGM, but I can't give you that because they make you sign in with the ID of the person whose account belongs to. Uh, I, I can pass with you. You probably could just wear the glasses and you know <laughs> add some weight. I guess I don't know. <laughs> but I'll just put on a different suit, a blue suit instead of the gray suit. I believe I'm. Did I make this one? I guess that means you need to shut the fuck up. No, I've got one on my. Here, hold on. Here, hold on. I'll do you a favor real quick. Okay. All right. We got to wait for that. You ain't got to wait for it. You can talk. Oh, I know that. We're not going to sit here in silence. Uh, Caden was saying Triple Paul can't sign free agents like the Coyotes. So there you go. Actually, I guess my meme folder isn't on this one. Oh, yeah, it is. There, there we go. Yeah, I've got the actual clip i've had it on on my computer in my meme I, folder for i years. have the clip i just i don't want to get us you know taken down so i just do audio with a with a photo uh, yeah we deal with it. enough golden dollars sean did you see stuff. hold on did you see cody on the super bowl commercial there's a lot of wrestlers on the super bowl commercials cody was on one no but i saw that reed shepherd's mom of the uh, of the kentucky wildcats looks like she wants to finish her story oh well, this was in case you missed it. This was Cody uh, on the Super Bowl commercial, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doing Hold doing on, well. I'll show you all, uh... big feet guy. Sean, while you're doing scoops, can you find out if Donna Kelsey is going to be at WrestleMania now that uh, she is a Super Bowl champion? 
Is she? Just oh, now? Just now. Just now? Uh, at the Performance Center? She was at the PC, yeah. Oh, well, she was at the PC yeah. earlier this year. That's Last funny. Last year, at some point. Now we got to find out. Pretty funny. Kelsey boys tag team in wrestling, taking on the creeds. Let's go. We'll see. would be fantastic in, in wrestling. Yeah, probably. Gotcha. Honestly. Now, for some reason I can't uh, get this file to pull up, but anyway, Reed Shepard's mom looks like uh, Cody Rhodes. Well, good luck to Reed Shepard's mom trying to finish her story. Oh, here we go. This should be good enough. Oh, the record time. We got to wait for the episode. Leave me with the dead air, please. Well, yeah, we thought you had thought you were clicking. There, there it is. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no. Reed Shepard, lights out, brother. He's uh, great. Good on him. Case and Wallace is doing well for OKC. I, I, I appreciate that he's uh, playing well. So I stopped watching NCAA sports the last few years before the NIL deal took place. I love the Kentucky Wildcats. I do, but I felt kind of gross. I had done this story. Actually, it got me uh, some some nice uh, recognition within my college about pay for play, one and done, a lot of stuff like that. And I spoke to Kenneth Fareed, who became a very rich NBA player. Oh, yeah, but We went to the same Fareed. college together at the same time. And it was wild, like just the the meager living situation that he had as he was chasing the all-time rebounding record in the NCAA. So I stopped watching for a little, like a few years before the NIL. And then I came back and I started to go to Kentucky games last year. And I was like, Kaysen Wallace could be really good on an NBA team right now. Like he was, he was one of the most NBA appropriate talent that I have seen in years at Kentucky. I think he was, he was really great. I'm not surprised to see that he's doing good on the Kentucky Thunder. You were bigging him up uh, when he got drafted. You said you were you were hoping he would go to Toronto, and he did not. I was, basically. yeah. So I was I was excited for him, and yeah, he's they certainly need ball. guards over there. If there's one thing they need; it's a guard. <laughs> Toronto needs any help they can get right now. The mm. way they've been playing, I'm, I'm happy with the direction of the Raptors. I don't understand the Olenek trade, but. Yeah, that was a weird one. I wanted Olenek on OKC too. That was a that was a weird one. But giving up a first rounder for a thirty-two uh, year old that plays twenty minutes a game, I don't, I don't quite get it. But hey, anytime you can resign them and overpay by five million dollars too, you got to do it. Probably what they'll do, honestly. Yeah, Sean, we had uh, Connor Casey on the show earlier. He's a great guy, and uh, we asked him if he would manage you in a wrestling match. What did he Connor say? Casey? He said, "Yeah, absolutely. We're going to put together a whole stable of." wrestling media yeah he uh managed me at ball out that's for damn sure um i had for some reason they had dom d'angelo all five foot six of him playing power forward against me and i hit i think five or six straight turnaround jumpers and like in the paint it was very very easy no disrespect dom i love you <laughs> then they switched old frosted mini sheamus on me and there was no turnaround right to be had I couldn't even physically turn around anymore. I was useless. <laughs> I did not score again in the game. In fairness, there's only like four wrestling media members who are over the, the six foot bracket. Mm -hmm. Very few of them. I see. I was in shoes, so I was a six one on that day, but yeah. I'm really underselling yourself here at six one. Really? Come on, Sean. Is that a gimmick? It was know about like months. There was somebody on Twitter that said that I was five, five, hundred pounds soaking wet. I do remember that person. <laughs> well, it was two days ago, so I would hope so. Listen, man, CTE isn't my thing. What can I say? I don't get on Twitter. It's good. Anyway, we're dropping a Rhea Ripley interview tomorrow. Hey, that's that sounds like a good idea. It sounds like a good interview, too. See you guys later. <laughs> Thanks Bye, for Sean. no selling that one, Sean. I edited that interview. <sighs> People suck. <laughs> Tim Winninger said lately Rampage has been the best pure wrestling show. Hey, there you go. Except for the Bucks presentation. That was not pure wrestling. That was that, that was a ruled. massacre. <laughs> it ruled. It was good, but it was Fantastic. it was not a wrestling presentation. But I I understand the message. Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, that Love was the uh 
Young Bucks presentation. They got top flight. Did they got top flight? Uh, this Wednesday on, on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, rankings, we- by the way. We didn't get a chance <laughs> to talk about the rankings. Oh, uh, you're in that like, cut. Right two talk weeks about- ago. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago they they did the rankings. They brought them back. We didn't get a chance because the world happened. Uh, and then like they it looked like they were skipping this week. Then they did them after Collision instead of after Dynamite. So we're already we can't figure out when we're actually going to drop these rankings weekly. Uh, they screwed up in the graphic. They said that Bullet Club Gold moved up in the rankings. But they actually went down because they were first, and then they're now they're second. Moxley and Claudio just replaced Claudio and Danielson. They're just like, yeah, it all counts the same in the tag team division. Roderick Strong, by the way, no longer in the top five. Don't know why he's getting an international title shot after now not being in the top five. Uh, you know, wasn't that the thing? And then it became. Adam Copeland and Daniel Garcia, Tony Schiavone's like, you're in kind of sort of the top five, maybe, but the world title is already accounted for. So you get your chance at another title. Take your pick. (laughs) This is why I simultaneously hated and was like, okay, with the Daniel Garcia Copeland thing, I, I hated that it was Garcia who got to come out and be like, I'm challenging you, and the winner gets Christian. And I'm like, wait, why does Daniel Garcia get that? Why does he get to be that guy? And then they did the, oh, Tony Khan's telling me my ear, blah, 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 this match is official. And I was like, okay, you cleaned it up. But in the moment, I was like, why does he get to make this call? Like, that's not him. He's not number one contender. He's not even in the top five. So, like, I get he had just come off a big win, and Copeland could easily be like, You know, that this is, I don't know. This is the whole thing about the rankings that you and I talked about. It's like, we hope they do something with it, but clearly they did not. (laughs) It's just satisfying their own like need to tell a story. But even then they're all over the place. People have pointed out that you're wrong. And Copeland was the one who made the challenge and Garcia. Sure, whatever. I don't care. Either way, Copeland shouldn't be the one who gets to make that challenge either. That should be Tony Khan making the match and saying the rankings matter. And that the winner of this gets, gets a Christian. I don't well, care the challenge. I care that the wrestler doesn't get to make the challenge if he's not the champion. And then Tony Khan just gets to say, oh, okay. Why don't, why doesn't, why can't they make the challenge and be like, you, you, it's collaboration working together to put it in Tony's ear what, what you want. And then Tony made the decision. Because the challenge was with that. Pardon? I said I didn't have an issue with that. I thought that I all made sense I thought, to I thought, me. I thought it looked stupid. I thought it looked silly just to do just to just to say that I'll be like winner gets Christian. It's like okay, sure. But like why do you get to make the title match number one contender shot? Why doesn't Tony make it if the rankings matter? Why doesn't Tony say Tony oh, why, doesn't Tony, why doesn't Tony Shavani say, guys, I've been told that if you you know that this match, we're gonna do a match, Copeland and, and Garcia, the winner gets Christian. And then they say okay and they shake on it and then they do whatever the rest of the promo was. I didn't that like they had to backtrack stupid. to make it make sense. They didn't backtrack to make it make sense, though. Yeah, they did, because the guy who was supposed to make the match didn't make the match the way that the match was supposed to be made. But Tony Khan could have just been like, no, that's not how we're going to do it. Instead, he agreed with it. It was a good idea. Let me get bothered by the things I want, okay, Jeff? Shut up. (laughs) I'm not even bothered by it. Here we are having very non-arguments about it. You're very bothered by it. My point was the rankings continue to not matter in Jeremy's and Jeremy said the same thing. The rankings continue to not matter. Well, yeah, that part I'm a, a little of like the, it's not, I mean, they're, they're not presented all that great. Again, you got to have just consistency with this. This is what I wanted. I just give me some consistency with the rankings and we're already off to a rough start with how consistent they're going to make these things. I do think, by the way, Swerve should just get a one-on-one match against Samoa Joe. He was the top-ranked person. Why does Adam Copeland... Or not Adam Copeland, sorry. Why does Hangman Page... Why does Hangman Page get to tie Swerve in the rankings when Swerve is 2-0-1 against him? It's still Swerve's match. Nonsense. I don't like it. I don't like it. I agree. It should have been a one-on-one match because who was number one in the rankings coming into this and who didn't lose the match? Thank you, SP3. SP3, I don't give a 
fuck about what you think. He's so mad. You know Joel's mad when he gets to cursing. No, I just That's when Joel gets super mad when he starts cursing. Maybe Punk was right about the rankings as well, Chisholm. Maybe he was. Maybe they need to get rid of the rankings again. Bell Renette sent a super chat saying, not going to lie, Okada going to AEW is not a surprise at all for me. Like a surprise would have been Jacob Fatu going to AEW, which not going to lie. I could see even with the, the record, you got a cousin on the board and his name was on the family tree. I mean, the family tree thing, he's got a lot of people talking, but it didn't really make it sound like Fatu is going to go directly to, to WWE or AEW. It just sounds like he's on the board because he's part of the dynasty. It's part of the bloodline. I think Fatu is most likely to end up in WWE. I don't know when that's going to be, but it feels like he's going to, that's his most likely option. Yeah, I don't know when. I hope he calls Cody and Cody just keeps losing. <laughs> really, hey? Yeah. But see, Cody, he's an idiot. <laughs> that's the video that you need to crop down a bit because it's like the cheer the, the 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 audience for the first like two seconds that just that just takes you right out of it nah maybe i'll do that one day you're not gonna do it it's just like no nah, i'll do it i'll do it i do agree i do agree now that i like actually played it on here and i, and I heard it i do agree that the audience is a uh, a little long there see the conversations about television production return. Uh, let's, I don't know where to talk about. We we kind of did the Okada stuff. There isn't much to talk about. He's coming into AEW. That's the, that is the, uh, that's the report. And he's going to have matches and he's going to go after titles, I guess. I don't, that, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know what to expect out of Okada. I don't know what to, uh, other than good matches, storytelling wise, booking wise. I don't know what to expect out of Okada. And maybe that's just the way it should be. Yeah, who will his first feud be? Chris Jericho. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who it's going to be, but I wouldn't be surprised. Nah, I'm, I don't know. Nah, if they do this Painmaker, Rainmaker, they already did that. That was the whole, that's where the Rainmaker or Painmaker came from. Came from. <laughs> yeah. So they need to do it again this time on AEW TV. <laughs> I saw well, I just flipped the table. <laughs> no. If it's Chris Jericho, I'm gonna be so mad. Well, I mean, everyone wants them to go against like the top guys in the company. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't like it either, chat, but here we are. Better not be Chris Jericho. I, I think it'll be mm, I think it'll be Samoa Joe. You think they shoot him right to the top and do the, yeah. the whole title match right up? I yeah. could see it. I mean, I think it really depends on what they're trying to set up for the spring into the into the summer, right? If they have a big event that uh, and I'm not talking about all in, I'm talking about like if they have a big event that's happening stateside, you know, during the summer months, then yeah, Okada and Samoa Joe would be a pretty damn good title match to put on the card. Um, but yeah, it, it's. It's very interesting because again, this is this is the one thing with Okada. We've seen him in AEW. He hasn't won, but like we've seen him perform in AEW, and now is the chance for us to be like, okay, now he's officially here. Now he's officially an AEW talent. How does he operate within the AEW narrative structure? I hope that uh, Okada comes out, confronts Samoa Joe at Big Business, and Samoa Joe. It's like I said, bring your record and your reputation. You're zero and two, and your reputation says you're a fucking loser. Get to the back of the line, and then we get sad Okada with the balloons again, <laughs> and they throw up the graphic. <laughs> Kazuchika Okada is all elite, and it's sad Okada with the balloon. That's right. Ah, little Kazu, that was my favorite Okada. Ruled, ruled, just coming out with the balloon, lost his way. It's fantastic. Now I would do, I would do Okada and Joe right off the bat, just like start off, start off hot make it make this dude a big deal and immediately because he, he should be and he is so um uh I, that's that's where i would go with that i'm more interested where osprey goes for his first feud because i imagine he's wrestling at revolution maybe he's not but i imagine he is i don't know what that is right now so this is why <laughs> again we, we still have to tell do we have to tell the story of osprey and 
and the Callus family? Do we have like do we have to oh, do fuck. it? Fuck, I forgot that was a thing. That, that's the problem. That was a thing, and that's why I'm like now when I say Jericho, like I'm not totally, I'm not I'm not joking so much. Does nah, Osprey's Osprey's does he get coming in him? big baby face though? Well, that's that's the thing. Does he come in and and go for the Callus family and then house a fire or? Do we just ignore it and be like, no, it d- d- didn't happen. Let's just move past it. I'd be fine with that, by the way, moving past it and just letting Osprey do Osprey things. Yeah, well, the, the Kyle Fletcher thing is. Is still hanging out there. I, I think that I'm like, Osprey loves the, the United Empire guys. So I don't know if he wants to fully break away from that either. Um. I could see it being Osprey just comes back. He's with Don Callis family. Sure. Fucking do Osprey and Jericho again, or Osprey and Fletcher against Sammy and Sammy and Jericho. I don't, uh, I don't care about that. Someone in the chat's mentioning that Moxley, you know, he, he laid out the gamut and it feels like that's a CMLL thing, but why not extend that over to, to Osprey? And Osprey can come in on his first night of Revolution. Do Mox and Osprey? It's a pretty good match. It's a pretty hot match, if you ask me. But you got to announce it's going to happen. So, am for that. I like that. I do like that. Um, but they they do have to wrap quickly. Hopefully, Osprey and Callus. Like you just gotta you gotta at least go ahead and end it. Have Osprey come out and be like, "Bruv, you're a dickhead," and then punch him in the face, and then that's the end of it. I'm all that's that's all it's got to be. Doesn't need to go any further than that. I, I hate the idea that they could do this, run the show with Mox and Osprey, Osprey's first appearance, and then and then unfortunately the Cows family gets involved in the match. Not causing a DQ, but gets involved to cost in the match. Do you do it or do you just let it go? Nah, if anything, it would just be a win loss and you tell the story after that. I don't want again, just make it make it quick, make it painless. Osprey comes out and he either gets attacked by the Don Callis family and that's that. And then he can maybe wrestle those guys because those are all fun matches until it turns into shenanigans and nobody gets over but Callis. Or he jumps himself out. Fletcher can join him. Maybe they can feud with Hobbs and Takashiko because that's like a fun feud. Like there, there's stuff there that they can do with them, but I just got no faith in any callous stuff and then if you want to throw on jericho on top of that i really got no faith on that yeah i'm not really looking forward to a jericho osprey mingling of stories bring him in have him do mocks osprey yeah like osprey trying to get kyle fletcher back but then you gotta like what do we do beyond that right um what's all we'll say do beyond it well, I, I know what I'm saying. Like, what do you, where do you where do you go from there? Does he reestablish United Empire in AEW? Like, what does it do? Uh, he's a trio. He does a trio with with when Mark Davis comes back. Yeah, I think I think he tries to reestablish United Empire. He has a very high like affinity for all of those guys, and you know for good reason. So I don't think he wants to fully get away from that. Yeah. So again, we'll we'll see what happens when when Mark Davis is. But then you got two UEs. You got undisputed. Oh, I guess it's undisputed Kingdom. The Kingdom. I'm thinking undisputed Era. Yeah. And then United Empire. Oh, undisputed Kingdom can kick rocks. Honestly, I we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, Weissel both sent a super chat saying, "I know I've asked this before, but I'll ask again: Is this AEW roster an all timer? When at full strength, it could be the best ever, right?" From a wrestling perspective, by the way, that's a show that's also on the main channel. Uh, from a wrestling perspective, yeah, absolutely. From a character perspective, there's a lot of strength behind it. Jeremy just kind of made allusion to Undisputed Kingdom, where it's like, again, a group of very strong wrestlers with a story that is kind of hindered due to circumstance. Dude, dude, dude. I'll talk about the the, the roster stuff in a second. Sure. But. Adam Cole just like off screen and he just like rolls up. Well, it just rolled up to Chuck Taylor. Oh man, he's like, and you're still injured. I'm like, what is Christopher Reeves out here doing rolling up on people? Not Christopher Reeves. Oh. I I would what what I cackled and not a good cackle of like Oh, that was cool. Like, this is the least intimidating badass I've ever seen in my life. 
Like it was so it was not good. So bad. That's an Eminem line, everybody. All right. Roll up on you like Christopher Reeves. Ah, that's all. <sighs> yeah. Give me, some, give me a little credit here. It's just really dying. It's disrespecting Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Superman, I, can't I ain't speaking of the dead. Um, okay, the uh, yeah, the the Adam Cole stuff. It sucks. Like it, again, it sucks that he's injured, but also this is the pivot conversation all over again. How do you pivot when both of the guys that were the tops of this heated rivalry friendship turn around? Like, how do you how do you tell that story in the meantime, or how do you pivot to tell the story with? everybody else who's involved with undisputed kingdom when like it feels like they're trying to turn it into the roddy story because roddy's the only one competing for a singles title whereas wardlow was like yeah i'm gonna go after the world title and what has wardlow done since then he's beaten a couple of jobbers in 12 seconds and moved along like it just there's a big uh disconnect that happened once they did the reveal because they're like oh shit we're gonna be without mjf who was the guy who was going to feud with these guys for a while and adam cole is still injured for an unforeseen amount of time that seems to be longer than we expected. What, what do we do? And the answer right now is not much. It's, uh, it's something. Oh, and yes, I'm hoping that Wardlow is also not hurt because there was the whole thing with his knee and he said he's fine, but then we haven't really seen him at all. It could just be a rest up thing. So hopefully he's not injured and they're just saying rest up and get better. They should just take them off TV, man. Like it's... There's, there's an incredible irony, by the way, that they they literally hobbled out of 2023 by having the people who were being blamed for the reason that it, things weren't working well on screen, like the, the MJF title reign, the comedy stuff and the friendship stuff, the way that it was going in the storyline and the way people were feeling about it. There's an incredible sense of irony that like they were injured and they hobbled out of 2023 and now everything's kind of playing out very differently in 2024 with undisputed kingdom just being off to the side. And like, it sucks to say it, but you, you gotta at least bring up the fact that like injuries forced their hand, but they had to at least finish like limp to the finish line with the storytelling. They immediately cut them off because then they united bullet club bang scissors and, but they didn't even feud with Undisputed Kingdom, which is who they should have been going after. They the should have. On. Bang, bang, so gang. Guys, on. Absolutely ham on them. Yeah, you guys went and just a, there was a thread there that you could, a story you could tell with MJF gone. Instead, they just pivoted to something completely wacky. It was, uh, I don't know, it was a, it was a choice. Um, going back to the, the previous Super Chat of like, is this the greatest AW roster of all time? Like that 2021 roster was really good when when punk was there i'll keep saying this too wwe had like a banging roster in like 2019 i believe it was or was the talent hoarding year yeah yeah like 2018 2019 they didn't utilize any of them worth of shit but like you look at that roster on paper and you're like oh yeah all these guys are really really good and like their women's division was really good too like it was it was never a talent issue during those years the shows just sucked and it was just awful the matches sucked the the story so everything sucked we were repeating the same stuff on top the entire not even the raw was was lather rinse repeat for months and months and then smackdown was not good either yeah it was it was just not good at all but like the roster itself was fantastic no i don't know if you had anything to add on that no, <laughs> you're talking about the uh the the strength of the uh the rosters on aw and wwe at the time so yeah this is uh, this is a strong roster that can get strong this is the other thing too about why you bring in you know certain talent on top is that when you're dealing with injuries you do have to cycle some people around and you do have to kind of reconfigure your your top line and that's what's going on in AEW. WWE, you know, going back to the why didn't they make a stronger play for this person, that person, or this person, is because they kind of have that top line right now, and their underline isn't that far off either. You look on, you know, who's competing in the Elimination Chamber qualifiers. A lot of them are guys and girls, guys mostly right now we're talking about, that are like 
just there and can easily be slotted into the main event to go after Seth Rollins or go after, you know, do a Roman Reigns story. Some of them we've already seen because the Roman Reigns story has been three years long, but they still exist and they can still be slotted in. Whereas in AEW, it's like they kind of have them, but injuries kind of force their hands otherwise. And the, the slotting of talent is just kind of their their major issue. The, again, the depth chart is what we go back to with why Solable's comment from a while ago. So yeah, that's kind of where, where my brain is with the, the, the rosters. They should do a hard brand split on AEW. I don't think so. Nah, I would love it. I'm going to talk to Tony about it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get an interview with Tony on Radio Row. Talk about it. Everybody else did. He answered the same question so many times. I listened to about like seven Tony Khan interviews this week. And I'm just like, man, this. Can y'all ask him a new question, please? Like, can we just like try to ask him something different? Instead, it was just Tony. What do you think about this streaming deal, Tony? Talk to us about Sting. Cam Newton was the only one who just like didn't care at all about AEW. Bless Cam. Greatest Panthers player in history. Fight me. Didn't care about AEW. Didn't clearly didn't wasn't a wrestling fan at all. But he's like, What what about you can come to AEW Cam? Cam's like, yeah, shit's gotta make sense. And that's with a C. Cam's like, yeah, to make sure y'all paying me on this. Cam, by the way would tower over some of these AEW dudes. Cam's a big dude. Like, he he would tower them. Yeah. How tall is he? Oh, Cam's like, I feel like he's like 6'4", like 2'50", two, two give or take. He is 6'4". Okay. And why am I getting stuff in kilograms? What do we do? Uh, because I'm Canadian. 6'4", <laughs> 245. He's a big dude, especially hang on one. right there. Yes. Good stuff. He would be, you know what? He would be again, talking about the, 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 the land of the giants in WWE. He'd be right on par with drew McIntyre. And then he would be, he would be the giant in AEW. Cam, Cam Newton. That dude was special. It's sad. If we, we didn't win the Super Bowl. we're not going to talk about that, but it's very sad. No, we're not going to win it, but let's, uh, you want to, you want to talk about raw real quick. Let's get to the super chat first. Oh, uh, f- talk about it. Raw. A lot of stuff. Uh, Will Chisholm said the the faction, the Undisputed Kingdom, looks sad now. Who would have thought them taking the masks off was the high point? This was a month and a half ago. <laughs> Shaking my head. <laughs> like it makes a point, but this the, and this is the thing. It's like every not everyone, but like the core of it of the story is injured. You have to hope that when they bring it back around, it's a big moment. That's really the only way you save it. Is that they they don't go their separate ways. They're still Undisputed Kingdom, but like just just. In their undisputed kingdom in the background they're still wrestling they're still doing their thing but like no more mission statement promos no more you know we're gonna do this we're gonna do that it's just they they build up a, a winning record and they make themselves undeniable and then max comes back and they that he wants to take on this hot product this hot undisputed kingdom but they got a little while until they can get there you know what they should do hmm. is they they should what is hold on Sorry. Oh, what they should do is they should take them off TV completely and just have them just play like video games. And then Adam Cole is like, our job's done. We ran MJF off. Now we just get to play video games. Everybody tune in to AW Dynamite next week to see how far I've gotten in it. Fuck, he's playing. I don't know. What, what does Adam Cole play? Fortnite? I don't know. I don't think oh, Adam Cole played Fortnite. No, no, he plays. He plays some Resident Muslim. Evil seventy eight. Yeah, yeah, that feels like an Adam Cole game. That's what he should do. Like we just get weekly updates on like Adam Cole's video game progress. No, Halo. Wow. He plays Halo. Yeah, he plays everything that's not. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Instead, yeah. he's on TV doing nothing. Like. He's on TV threatening people from a wheelchair. Well, that's what he should do. He can't get up. And then when he gets up, it'll be a big deal. He should be playing AW Fight Forever because nobody else is. So he should <laughs> be like sitting there playing. He's like, yeah, I'm doing all my cool moves in AW Fight Forever. Available now. Go check it out, everybody. You can download Swerve Strickland on February 14th. 
get Swerve. Swerve's going to be in the AEW Revolution Trios match or, or triple threat match. Adam Cole's got to get Yeah, the Trios that. match is, is acclaimed and, and Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Yeah. Or Bang Bang Scissor Gang facing each other. All right. So he's you know going to be in the triple do? threat match. It's Samoa Joe, who I'm not sure if Samoa Joe's in the game. And Hangman Page, she's definitely in the game. Play AEW Fight Forever. It's just a weekly advertisement for Fight Forever. Adam Cole and Undisputed Kingdom just play and fight forever every week. <laughs> Someone in the chat saying, you joke, but I'd be so down for Undisputed Kingdom as streamers. I'm not joking about this. This is way better than them like doing nothing, acting like the group of badasses when everybody's just like, yeah, sure, dude, whatever you say. They're hurt. They're tired and they wrestle children. Uh, <laughs> it's all I not got. good. The, like i said i hope they come around on it i hope they figure out what they're supposed to do uh what are we left with let's talk about let's talk about raw, raw. there's matches okay there you go new day and jay uso are gonna take on imperium new day and jay it's 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 just me noose new day us day one day one uso i don't know how they where are they setting up jay and gunther at? i think they'll just do a big raw like the one that's uh the one in Chicago before Mania. Okay. All right. That's fair. Because they can't do an elimination chamber unless his green card has come through. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just looking at like where else can they do it? They, they could do it the, the raw after Mania. Or, sorry, the raw after Olympic. Uh, one more time. The raw after elimination chamber is in San Jose. You could okay. do it there. All right. uh, and then, yeah, there's just a run of Texas and. Yeah, Chicago. What happened to the brand split, Joel? Why are these SmackDown people on my television tonight? So I did wonder why we're doing a bunch of like SmackDown women and SmackDown men a part of the chamber qualifiers. It felt weird to me. Stupid. What's stupid is like here's Randy and Sammy, Randy Orton and Sami Zayn, two Raw people on a SmackDown match. Huh? You couldn't do. A SmackDown person? What was LA Knight? They couldn't bring Ivar to SmackDown to lose. I guess that's not a main event match. Well, no, he had a he had a LARPing thing. He had to be at. Couldn't, couldn't bring him out there to lose. Bronson couldn't come to. I get Bronson's gonna win though, because like he's got to be part of the chamber match. So Bronson's gonna win. Bronson's gonna be Bobby Lashley, and it's probably gonna be because of uh, the Fuck the carrying cross group. Yeah. They're gonna do, maybe Scarlet's gonna have the witching glass again, and she's just puts it down and then you know it spins and he's like tiktok that's their gimmick joel did you hear about that tiktok TikTok? i thought someone else did tiktok kesha thank you time goes by so slowly no wait that's that's madonna (laughs) kesha's so much better than madonna well it depends who you ask financially anyway uh yeah so the uso thing i think is going to be uh well i would do it in chicago the chicago or if Where's Jimmy from? Jimmy's a Disney a SoCal guy. So doing it in the bloodline. Thank you. Isn't he? Isn't he from California though? Isn't he built from California? Or is he built from Florida? He's built for for just being by himself. It's just him. Who's him? Who's yeah? <laughs> day, day, day one shit. Uh, that's what Jeremy is being right now. Is a day one shit. San Regardless. Francisco. Yeah, yeah, from the, from the Bay. So you do it at San Jose at the SAP Center on the 26th of uh, February. There's the match. Oh, yeah. Randy Orton is on SmackDown. For some reason, I thought Randy yes. was on Raw. Randy is on SmackDown. So is AJ. <laughs> I completely Scott. forgot. They just, they haven't have it. It's very strange. And, and then this is, well, because it's, you know, brand supremacy and all that stuff. Uh, you've got Bronson Reed and Bobby Lashley. We just talked about that and how it goes. Uh, LA Knight, yeah, takes on Ivar. Ivar is back from his latest LARPing trip. So LA Knight's going to qualify the, for the chamber. Is that what we're doing? I guess. Logan Paul is going to be in the chamber, right? That was very strange. I assume they're going to set up Logan Paul and Ricochet. <laughs> What, they already did that though i'm not gonna do that do it again at, in the elimination chamber is he gonna oh, be in the that. chamber is logan so here's, is who gonna be in the chamber logan's gonna be in the chamber i guess i think so he's here's, gotta face the miz oh yeah he's in the chamber yeah here's a, here's a funny story i don't know if it's funny here's an anecdotal story for everybody so we're watching smackdown on friday night as we tend to do logan paul's on screen and like he had some good lines he was like you know i want the roman reign schedule like I, don't, I shouldn't be wrestling Idaho or wherever. Like, what are we doing? Like, I'm a pay-per-view attraction. What are we doing wrestling on TV? I thought it was- Utah? Utah? Yeah. 
I thought he was doing well. And I was like laughing. And one of the kids was watching with us. The kids was laughing. And I was like, hey, you know who that is? And he's like, no. And I'm like, that's the guy who invented Prime. Kids, they know about the Prime now. Prime's, Prime's big. So they know about the Prime. And I'm like, that's the guy who invented Prime. And he's like, no, it's not. I was like, yeah, that's him. And he's like, well, what's his name? I was like, Logan Paul. And he's like, oh, Logan Paul did invent Prime. He's like, that's Logan Paul? It's like, yep, that's him. He's a wrestler. And it's like, nah, he's not a wrestler. It's like, he is. I mean, maybe he's not. The wife is like, exactly, he's not a wrestler. He's like, he got a title belt that shows he's a wrestler. He's, like, he's a pretty good wrestler. The kid was astounded that the inventor of Prime was on WWE television and is a wrestler. So absolutely, like, was stunned at this information. There's a story for everybody. Really, the takeaway here is that children are stupid. I mean, fair. <laughs> I didn't specifically say yours. Just nah, just all of them. I yeah. agree with that. <laughs> the trick is to hit them with fridge doors and we'll be okay. Yeah, all children are stupid. I completely yeah. agree. Our truth yeah. takes on JD McDonough. Speaking of giant children, I'm sorry, <sighs> giant heads. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Sure. So, listen, I'm looking forward to our truth winning the tag titles at WrestleMania with the Miz. Seems, seems like it's gonna happen. Yeah, we're gonna get uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne against uh, the old Judgment Day. By the way, Damian Priest can't cash in his briefcase while Seth Rollins is not medically cleared. Yeah, that really uh, that that's how every single briefcase holder. Did it right? Totally. That's the rule. Was there a briefcase? Was there a cash in when someone was not medically cleared? <sighs> not medically cleared, I don't think. Yeah. But injured post match, yes. But that's not. See, this, I know is, not the same this thing. is the difference because Damian Priest. Look, you could, you don't have to buy the explanation if you don't want. I. Fair. They're clearly just making shit up, but. <laughs> I do think that like he tried his best of he's not medically cleared. He cannot compete in an official match because he's not medically cleared. So I can't officially cash in right now. Again, if you don't like the explanation, fine. They are making it up as they go. The rules don't matter. The points don't count these briefcases who gives a shit, but priest is at least trying his best with what he's working with up to why he looks like an idiot every single week for not cashing in on a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest. Whose bloodline is it anyway? No, that at least makes some sense. You just got to follow the tree. That's fair. It's a big old tree too. Thank you, by the way, for the rock doing the, uh, the intro today and uh, Liv Morgan battles Zoe Stark in an elimination chamber qualifying match. Good luck to Liv Morgan in the chamber in, Opt in, in, in Optus. Wow. In Perth, Australia. They spoiled it. WWE spoiled it. They did? They spoiled the chamber matches. Tea leaves. You can read Jade them. Cargill is apparently going to be in this chamber match. Allegedly. That's, the one, that, yeah, that's the one thing of intrigue. I'm like, how does she get in? Who does she beat? She beat Maxine. Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> that's right. Because you beat Aubrey, you get in. Yeah. I would love to see that be the reason. No, they'll probably put her up against like Maxine Dupree and then she'll just eat the shit of her. Eee. That's I know. gotta be that's it's gotta be a spot. pump kick and yeah, jump. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's all you do. I'm not saying you do moves, no head scissor takeover attempts, just one and done. That's yeah, it. That's Did Michin, just... Michin had the uh was Michin, that a... yeah, she lost to Bianca. She lost to Bianca. Okay, I was trying to say she had two we... she had the Tiffany Stratton match and she had the Bianca match. I know one of them was a qualifier. Yeah, why isn't Tiffany Stratton getting an opportunity on this? She won. Why it, she is getting an opportunity? Is she? She's in the qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. So there you go. Well, she doesn't send a super chat saying, "I think Seth shoot her because he can't catch it." Well, that's kind of what we're saying. Is yeah, there's, there's injury. Um. Oh, going back by the way, Wig, Wigby Wormbrain. That's a great name. Saying Takeshi hasn't lost in forever yet. No championship match. There you go. Hasn't wrestled in forever before the Jericho match. See? What was the last Takeshka match? Before this Jericho match. Let's take a look. I got it. Why did you have to pick the guy? Can I, do I at least have his name? Damn it. I, I said I got it. Okay, it was Rampage against Daniels. Doesn't count. And then they lost the Tornado match to, to Sting and Darby. Oh, yeah, yeah, the great match against Darby. My memory oh, shit on match. this until like it's brought back up. That's that match against Darby did rule. It was a good match. Anyway, yeah. that's, uh, that's the show. That's what we do here. We look up cage match data and we talk about wrestling. 
which is also cage match data. Jeremy, anything you want to plug before we get out out of here for today? No, I don't know. Uh, no. Too much wrestling. Yeah, wrestling's stupid. It is. Let's all go get Super Bowl rings in honor of Taylor Swift's big Swifty Bowl victory. Do you see these Super Bowl championship belts they have? Of course I did. It gets posted on my timeline every two seconds. No, I don't. I stay off of this stuff. That's what you do. Anyway, we're going to be back on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern until noon. We'll have a guest, hopefully. We'll talk about wrestling because that's what we do. Too much wrestling. Jeremy's going to be around. I will be not. And uh, yeah. All right. Let's get out of here. I don't know what I'm doing. I am Natural Pearl, J-O-E-L-P-E-R-L. Ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary, we will see you in the next one. Cheers.